Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Friday night, it's New Year's Eve Eve, yeah. you know, and this is actually our last live stream of 2022. New Year's Eve Eve. Yeah. Okay. Like tomorrow night is New right, Year's Eve. Right, it's New Year's Eve, right. And then Sunday is New Year's Day. Okay. Tomorrow's right. Friday, right? No, today's Friday. Today's Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Well, so we're we going out tomorrow to go do the, do the club? Well, yeah, you said... Okay. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So this tomorrow's New Year's. To, tomorrow's New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tomorrow night is. Okay. Yeah, we'll go. Okay. We'll either. Uh, we'll well, either which go. one do you want to go to? Because <sighs> there's two. Yeah. They're having, as far as I know, they're doing Memento Mori at Barbarella. Yeah. Which will probably be less of a shit show because yeah. it's not. How many people are going to that that we know? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I haven't checked. We'll have to check. Or we'll we can do it. mannequins, which, like I said, I That's think gonna be a shit show. is which is going to be. Um, I mean, you saw it at Halloween. It's going to be like that, worse. Like you couldn't move it yeah. there. And also, um, I like I said, I think they're doing the blackout fetish thing, so it'll be like super dark in there, and everybody will be half naked. So it'll be that. So everybody is going to come. To it that, is closer. probably. It is closer a little bit. A little bit, although you know. Uh, you know, they're both about, to be honest, even though Barbarella is farther, it's easier to get to because you can, yeah. you can take the toll road the whole way instead of to me surface streets. To me, it's the same. Okay. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see who's going where. We'll see how it is. <laughs> we have to, we have to see where the cool people are yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Of course. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to go out tonight, but then you went to the biker bar, so I assumed yeah. you didn't want to go out tonight because you already went to the biker bar. No, I'm fucked up. So that's but I, mean. I could go. I could go tonight. Well, I'm not ready, though. I could go that's what I mean. Well, that's okay. why. See, I got I, I can't just... No, I could go. I can't just go with the drop of a hat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got preparations I got to make. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have hair or makeup or anything like that. You don't have to do anything like that. You can just throw on a shirt and boots and <clears throat> pants and you're ready to go. I can't do that. You know, we'll worry. We'll go tomorrow. Yeah, if that's if that's if that's what you want. I mean, I don't know. You'll you'll. Be if you want to go tonight, I mean, we'll. No, I don't. I don't actually. Okay. I don't. Okay. If you don't want to go, then don't worry about. <laughs> well, it. like I said, I don't. I don't have no money anyway, so it's like I got I'm money. Just, and I got all kinds of money. All got kind more of money. money than God. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God's got. If a lot you of did, money. I wouldn't have any stress. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking, I don't know, I just kind of feel like mannequins would be fun, but then on the other hand, it would probably be like a shit show because it's going to be amateur hour, yeah. whereas Barbarella will be better because it'll be like more exclusive because yeah. it's not in the middle of everywhere. Yeah. I just don't know where everybody's going. And That's the difference. It will be cheaper if we go to Barbarella because I don't drink as much there yeah. because they don't have right. Like cocktails, and I don't get because they usually just have them in the cans. I tend to have more fun at fucking mannequins. Well, it depends. But the thing is, it'll probably be so packed, we won't be able to do anything. That's what I'm saying. It'll be like Halloween, which Halloween was fun, but it's like you couldn't really you couldn't do anything. You couldn't really do anything. Like you'd get there, and then like you just I think we we just stood mostly in one place all night because you couldn't go any place. Right. Every place was like so crowded. Yeah. So. So how's everybody doing? Let's see who let's see who's in. We got Zach in. Graham's in. Grandpa's hammer. Everybody's here. Yeah. Um. John Smith. Tom Sykes. Tammy's here. What's up, Tammy? John Smith says, if you can leave the house in under 10 minutes, you probably shouldn't leave the house. <laughs> it is easier for guys, though. I'm just yeah. saying. Like, you know what I mean? And especially guys that, you know, don't have any hair. Like you. See, she's fucking with me with my hair. I'm not fucking with you. I'm just no. I'm just saying that you, it's just easier. It's yeah. like lower maintenance. If I looked good bald, I would totally shave my head yeah. because it's like that's a fucking ordeal. I don't fucking need. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't. I don't look good with bald. With I don't. I don't look good with no hair. I was at the fucking. I was at the Oasis, which is fucking local biker Midnight bar here. And uh, I was talking to this uh, old lady. She's like, well, I still call her an old lady. She's like, she was sixty-seven. Well, I guess that is an old lady now. It's an old lady. It's an oldish lady. Yeah, she's more than 10 years older than me. And uh, she's telling me how pretty I am. So I started showing fucking photographs the way I used to look. 
<laughs> when you looked hey, like Rick Springfield. Really like Rick Springfield. Showed her all that. She's, you were such a pretty boy. You know, like 16. And I showed her fucking uh, just a, like 10 years ago when I had, or not even 10, a few years back when I had hair and everything before the beard. She's like, and, and, and before I before getting this jacked and fucking people don't recognize me. Yeah. I don't look like that anymore. Well, Funny. I mean, you've changed like, a lot. That's you, and I it's, said, yeah, that's it's me. not just it's a, you know, yeah, it's yeah. not just you like working out and stuff. It's also you being bald and having yeah. a beard and a mustache, yeah. which you've never had before. Yeah, they, they don't even recognize me. So they're like, "That's you," and I said, that's yeah, like that's... three things yeah. that are different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mansour, nineteen ninety two. Hi, Jenny and Tom. Love your mm-hmm. podcast. Well, thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, hey, Dave. Dave is here. Hey, happy almost twenty twenty three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Zach says, I always love when a woman can pull off really short hair for some reason. Yeah, it looks good on some people. Not on me so much, though. I feel like I don't, I don't look good with short hair, you know? Well, uh, when you had part of your head shaved, it was cool. Yeah, but then, like, the rest of it was long. Yeah, yeah the rest of it was long, yeah. Because it's every now and then, because my hair is just such... It's funny, but, like, before... <laughs> even before we started live streaming, um, I was telling Pookie, I was like, Mommy sheds more than you do. Like, I yeah. shed hair just, like, all over the place. Seriously, I can... Every day, and it doesn't matter, like, how many times you vacuum or whatever, I can run my toes over the carpet in this office and, like, pull up, like, a whole bunch of hair because, like, I just shed hair all the time. Yeah. Uh, but my hair never gets any thinner. Like, no. it's still, like, really voluminous. She just makes a lot, of, a lot of hair. I just have – I have a lot of hair. It's just yeah. kind of like – and so every time you wash it, every time you come in, it's just, like, this big fucking ordeal – and so every now and then I'm always kind of like, man, I should like just cut it shorter. Like I said, it doesn't look good bald. So a few times I've cut it like right here, like to my chin. And then it's like for a second, I like it. And then the next day I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? Now my head looks like a fucking bowling ball. You know what I mean? Like it looks like a big round. You look good with long hair. <laughs> They're part in the middle like that or bangs. And you look good with, uh, with your head, with the sides shaved. Yeah. You know, like an undercut. Yeah. It looks good. If you want me to do it, I mean, I'll, I'll shave it back. I've, yeah, I yeah. mean, I just it grew good. it back, but yeah. I don't know. It looks good. That it looks now good I'm just kind of like, maybe I should shave it back off again. Yeah. It is a lot easier to deal with. It looks good. I'll show you guys. You know. I got pictures. Just in the sense that it's not, you know, as hot. It's like it dries quicker. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have to use as much product. I don't You're have to right. use much shampoo or hair dye or anything like that i actually did i actually did my uh roots today but then i slapped a fucking wig over it anyways because <laughs> it hadn't really i washed it this morning but like i washed all the dye out and then it hadn't um it dried but it didn't really dry dry you know what i mean it's always kind of like i don't know it's hard to explain my hair is like a really really strange texture <laughs> John Smith said, I've mentioned this before, I have long flowing locks grown specifically to upset my prematurely balding brother. <laughs> look how cute. So Jen- funny. Look, look how cute Jenny's head was when it was shaved. Yeah. And that's that it was... like put up in a bun on the side, but she's got. Yeah, I just pulled it off. It was shaved all around the uh, the sides and the back. Yeah, it and was I all, I only that. had hair on the top. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I cut that hair for. Yeah. I can cut hair. Um, there's another one with her, with her head shaved. It's only a few years ago. Yeah, that's not that old. Of it. Yeah. And then she did that, and that's it with, that's shaved with red. Yeah, that's actually not, I mean, the ponytails, like the red, that's not real hair, though. It that's, won't focus. That's clip on. Yeah, part of it is. The front is my hair, but the back is for some reason like clip on ponytails. For some reason it won't focus on it. I don't know. You keep moving it. There, there you go. There it goes. There it goes. There you go. I think that's cute. Super cute. Yeah, our friend Brian took that picture. Yeah. And if you want that back, I'll cut it back into you. I don't know, I'll think about it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> and then um she had a lot of little different haircuts Over that was it years. when it was yeah that was when it was short oh yeah that's right i forgot about that because that was really short yeah that's probably the shortest it's ever been yeah for a while and it's funny too i'm reminded because every time i look at my um driver's license because when my driver's license picture was taken it was my hair was just like to here and it was bright red so i still have 
So now I'm like paranoid that I'm going to get pulled over because it still has the same picture of my driver's yeah. license. So I'm like paranoid they're going to get pulled over. They're like, this is uh, not you. That was back when Jen had her long hair in which she used to show her boobs. She's hide- She hides her boobs now. I don't hide them. Yeah, she doesn't wear those fucking low cut shit. That shit was well, so I don't fucking have, hot. I don't have that shirt anymore. You don't have that shirt anymore? That no. shit was so hot. I don't have that shirt anymore. Yeah. I got pictures of Jen's fucking boobs. They're so great. <laughs> yeah, she's at the club with the fucking low cut dress. Yeah, it looked cute. It was cute. Mm-hmm. What do you mean, uh-huh? <laughs> what do you mean, uh-huh? I got you... pictures of it. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just, you know, we don't go out as often as we used to. And like I said, a lot of the shirts, I don't have them anymore. Yeah. Because they're old. Well, you know? we'll get you some more. You know, I just Yeah, don't. we'll get you some more. It's not like you can't wear that anymore. You're, you're, uh, I think you actually look better than you used to. Um, because you, you've been running the bike, riding the bicycle. Uh, HRT has helped you some. Fucking, it's just, you know, I think you look great. Zach says, my mom has fibromyalgia and hates the cold, but she also has real long hair that takes forever to dry, yet refuses to get short hair, and it always bugs me that she won't do it. I mean, I understand, because I feel like that's something that older ladies do. They always kind of, like, cut their hair short. I get it. I do. Because, like I said, you know, my hair, my real hair is not quite this long. Well, no, it's actually probably about this long. But um, it's a pain in the ass, though. You're not, you're messing up the, um... You're mess it up? Yeah, you're messing yeah, up the that was light, Jen. and you're messing up the... You, nobody could yeah. see it anyway. Yeah. And Shit you, doesn't fucking... It doesn't And fucking, you messed up the, um, the light. I'm pretty sure yeah. you've already shown that already. Yeah. Not on it. But... Yeah. Okay, fine. Let's see. I'm gonna this. stop bragging on you then. Well, no, I'm just saying I'm that it's like you keep... You okay. ...doing that. Everybody's seen those pictures before. Yeah. <laughs> you had some... A couple of days ago. Where are they? Oh, well, that's good. At least it's just kind of like, look how, look how pretty you were, like, a long time ago. <laughs> You're not taking it anymore. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're not taking it Well, like anymore. I said, we never go anyplace, so it's like I'm we not really, again. you know, because I'm broke and I'm always working, so it's like I don't really have the time or the money or anything like that. I can't fucking log into uh, Facebook. I don't have my, my, my password and all that shit. Tom Sykes says, Night of the Comet is free on YouTube to watch. I just saw that, like, right before. I know. Like, I didn't watch the movie. I'm just saying I just saw that it was free. And I know, like, everybody was, like, telling us to do it, and we still haven't done it. Maybe we should do that for Sunday. I know I keep saying that. We still haven't done the review for, um, what do you call it? Uh, Jason and the Argonauts. We were supposed to do that today, but you left. So. We'll do it again. I guess we can do it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, every, everything's late, like I said. But because I'm, this weekend, I'm going to try and... Because remember how we were talking about how I kind of wanted to, like, revamp... Not, you know, I'm not going to do, like, anything drastic or nothing, but do, like, kind of revamp the logo and, um, you know, the social media sites and, uh, you know, do, like, new intros like for the movie reviews and the episodes and stuff like that. So hopefully this weekend I'll have time to like work on that a little bit. And then, and like I said, probably going forward, I might have to do like slightly fewer videos every week. Cause I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm just doing too many and I just don't have time to make them as good as I want to make them. Cause I kind of feel like, Oh my God, I didn't do one. I didn't put one up today or anything like that. So, and I might stop doing it too. Cause if, if any of you guys are on our, um, Patreon, a lot of times I would say like on Sunday I would post, Oh, these are all the videos that are going up this week. But the last few weeks I've been getting like behind and I haven't been able to post like, you know, there'll be like one or two of them that I don't get to. And so I don't know if I'm going to stop doing that or if I'm just going to say, you know, Oh, these are the ones that might be up this week <laughs> or or might not, like, depending on if I have time to do them or not. I just put up one today about um, more of the uh, spooky Looney Tunes cartoons. Because I did it. It's over on Scare Salon, if you haven't seen it, which is my other channel. Because remember a while back I did one that was, like, the 10 best, like, horror-adjacent Looney Tunes cartoons, like, from back in the day. And then there were some that I forgot, so I did another one today that was 
uh, that was five. Five of them. Zach says, what are you thinking of doing for the show's new look? It'll be similar, but, um, like, similar theme, but I just kind of, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm kind of, like, throwing different ideas around. I found some, like, kind of cool, like, inspiration uh, that I kind of was maybe, I don't know. I'll show it to you and later, maybe, and see what direction you want to go, because I can't really decide. But, I don't know. It's always, like, it's really, really hard for me to, like, I don't have that much trouble when I'm doing graphic design for other people. Like, I still do. Like, it's still hard to think of something, but especially if they don't have any idea of what they want, that's the worst. But when I'm doing stuff for for our show or for my own thing, it takes me forever. And I don't know why. I think it's just because I get overwhelmed by, like, all of the possibilities I think is what it is because I'm sitting there going well this is for me so I can do like absolutely anything I want I don't have to worry about oh it has to look like corporate for this kind of thing or they have to use this color you know what I mean because when I work for other clients you have like a, a lot of limitations but when you're doing stuff for your own self you can make it look however you want and I think that like like I said I think that overwhelms me because I'm just like, ooh, I could do this, or oh, I could do that, or I could do, and then like, I just, and I'm just sitting there going, oh my god, I'm just, now I'm like, I can't, now I can't do anything because I'm like, I'm just like, all the choices are piling on me and I can't decide, you know what Tom I mean? Tom Sykes said he, he would be fine with sidetracks going away, because most shows are sidetracks anyway. That's the, true. The thing is, though, is that this is just a hangout show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to be honest, it's, it's like, show. this one is like, um the fun the the most fun for me to do because um what oh she she went in the cabinet come out of there come out of there get out of the cabinet pokey don't yeah. go in there opening up the cabinets and going in i don't know why she wants yeah. to go in there there's nothing right. in there there's nothing in there she, she went in that's like opened that's up, went in that's where i keep my you know my coffee yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> okay have fun in there <laughs> i don't know what she's doing goes into the cabinet underneath the sink yeah like it's a big deal. And she's like, ooh, look. She there's like, like, she's going to Narnia. Yeah. yeah. There's like thinks. cans of coffee yeah. and shit in there. Uh, about sidetracks is that um, we're just hanging out tonight. Yeah. Uh, the show like, like I said, this probably this... would be on the schedule anyway. We would just call it something else. So getting rid of it. That's what I mean. It's like we would probably yeah. still be live streaming on Friday yeah. anyway. It's just that it's like, oh, maybe we do like a movie review or maybe or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like. This I like doing this show probably more than any of the other ones. Well, I don't know about that, but I mean, just because it's so it's easy. chill, it's yeah. easy. I don't have to do any, um, you know, I don't have to make any thumbnails for it. I don't have to do any research. I don't have to do anything like that because that's like, you know, takes a bit of time. And I like doing that, but mm. I'm just saying this one's easy because I can just like come on and we can just talk about whatever, yeah. you know. David Parker said that, uh, yeah, Jenny's been a hottie since I've known her. So I can see Tom being one proud dude. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. We, Jenny's been a little bit down in the dumps because she's been working so much. We've both been fucking working a lot. We've been stuck in the house a lot since the past two years. Yeah, well, yeah. It's not I just mean, us. It's everybody. It's and, not just so much that, too, yeah. but it's just kind of like, because over the holidays, like like I was saying, like I didn't, yeah. like I've had a really, um, you know, I, I really didn't have like a lot of graphic design work this yeah. year and shit like that. Money and because one because one of my major clients, they still give me work. But see, they had two businesses. Yeah, they have a um like a, a commercial property business and they had they were starting like a um like a tea business. Right. And so I was doing a lot of work for their tea business, but they decided they didn't want to do that anymore because it wasn't making any money. So now I'm just doing the stuff for their commercial real estate and that's not nearly as much right you know what i mean so it's just kind of like that i still have the same clients but they don't have as much work and yeah. it might like pick back up i'm trying to like look for some other stuff like yeah. so if anybody because i've been like applying for you know kind of freelance or remote work and shit like that because i'm looking for yeah more stuff because man the last couple months i've been like really really yeah struggling <laughs> yeah you know so that, that, I haven't. So I haven't really been like in the best frame of mind, you know. That family has been really good at Jenny. Past couple of years, all the fucking business they've thrown yeah. her way. 
they're a, a successful real estate family. It's a whole bunch of them. They're uh, they're Jewish American, uh, fucking nice people. When we went down there to go see them, they fucking hit us with whether or not we were with the tribe type thing. We're like, no, we're not with the tribe. It didn't matter though. Fucking they they uh, they were like, okay, you're still on the team. Uh, good, good, good people. Yeah, okay. they're really nice. Good I've people. been working for them for a long time. Right, yeah. Right. Um, Shit, that's been fucking, what, six, seven, eight years now? Six, how long is she doing? She's doing Pope. Probably about um, six, seven, eight years. Well, and you know what's interesting? They're not Floridians. I think they're from up north by uh, by by their accents. I don't think they're from Yeah, there. I think originally from, but yeah, from they. it's a... Um, it's a commercial property. They they basically like sell commercial properties. That's yeah. all. They they like uh, you know or manage commercial properties or whatever. And it's a married couple, the woman's brother and their dad. Yeah. Um. They run it. Yeah. So and like I said, on the side, um, you know, she wanted to do this kind of like um, kind of like high end tees kind of things. Yeah. So we were doing that for like years and years. Like she went all in. Like we did like a whole package thing. She went to trade shows. I designed like all the trade show shit and all like all the booth and everything. But they just decided it wasn't worth it anymore. Like they were yeah. spending too much effort and too much money on it and it wasn't they weren't really seeing much return. So you know, so they were like, "Yeah, we're just gonna like wrap that up." Because, like I said, they had the other business, and that's make that yeah. makes a lot of money. So I guess they figured it was just not worth it anymore. So that kind of sucked because I was getting a lot of work from that. But you know how I got um, you know how I got in touch with them was that a guy remember the print shop where I used to work back in 2013, where I got yeah, laid yeah, off in guy. 2016. Yeah, that guy. Um, there was a guy that used to come in there all the time. Uh, and I still get work from him occasionally, but he uh, he owns a store where he sells like as seen on TV kind of products. And what you do, like um, he's a wholesaler, so it's like they have uh, they get products, and then he's like, okay, well this company has this product that you know microwaves eggs or whatever, um, but you can package it any way you want. Like it's the same product essentially. But you can call it what you want and, like, make your own box and all that other kind of stuff. So I did, like, a lot of packaging design for him. And he used to come in the store where I worked. And I used to do shit for him all the time. And when I got laid off from that store, which is closed now, actually, um, he recommended me to those people. Yeah, okay. So it was, like, a referral. You're right. And then I ended up getting more work from them. From them. From they him. were for a lot. You know what? We've been, you've been, with, we've been with them so long. We need to send them some. Days. Yeah. Send them some fucking wine or a fucking some kind of fucking treat basket one of these days, just because yeah. of fucking how much business we've done with them over the years. They're good, been good business partners. Uh, Tom Sykes says we should talk about the Idaho student murders, the Moscow Slayer, uh, because he was just apprehended. So I'm writing that down. Okay, write that shit down. Write that shit down. Thank write you. that shit down. Thank you. I am. Yeah. Um, somebody asked if I was on Upwork. I used to be. Um, I think that my, uh, what you call it, my account um, didn't, uh, it, it went away. I have to probably go in there again. But I was on there for a while, but I wasn't really getting much from that. So I don't know. I got to do a thing tomorrow where I got to do like a, you know, on LinkedIn, like some jobs that you apply for, they want you to do that uh, phone interview. Where, like, they ask you questions, you have to, like, record your answers, like they're talking to you on the phone. Yeah. So I have to do that tomorrow. Good. But I'm not really sure, like, what they're a what they're going to ask me. So it's like, I hate, God, I hate doing job interviews. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really hate them. What is the interview for exactly? I never knew. Well, it's, um, it's at a, it's at a graphic design firm. Okay. You're going to do one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You will just work from home, huh? Um, this one, I'm not sure. It might be, this one might be in Orlando, so okay. I might have to, I might have to commute to it, but. Okay, so you're through. But okay. I, well, I don't know. I don't know how yeah. it's going to go. Okay. I've been Listen. looking for something remote, but if something comes up, like, kind of locally, then I'll go for that, too. Because, like okay. I said, I'm just sick of being broke, you know. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I didn't know about this. This is the first I've heard of this. But no, I totally, I totally agree. If you fucking want to go back out. And fucking do the thing, then do the thing. Well, I mean, to. I don't necessarily want to. It's just that... Right, to make the bills, right. Yeah. I mean, I would rather still work remotely. 
Right. And like 99% of the stuff that I applied for was remote. We'll still be able to do the show, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might, okay. I mean, we might have to shuffle times around and okay. things like that, you All know, right. depending on like what the hours are. Okay. I mean, ideally, it would be good if I could get something remote and part time. I did like refer, I did, um, I did uh, apply for a bunch of that kind of stuff too, because then that way it wouldn't be like taking up too much time. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Trying to get back into the fuck. There it is. What'd you get kicked out? The show. Yeah, I got kicked out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> got kicked out. Okay, I'm back. If you guys could like, share, and subscribe, that'd be awesome. Okay. Richard Brown said, after seeing the advert yesterday, I looked up your books on Amazon. Got your two books of stories in my basket. We'll order them tomorrow. Well, thank oh, you very thank much. You very I appreciate much. that. Which books did you did, did he order? Well, he said the books of the of stories, like my short stories. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like my horror stories. Right, yeah. yeah, those are good. Well, I hope you like them. Check out, look, man, check out Unseen Hand, too. That one will fucking trip you out. And then the, uh, uh, the, the unsolved fucking murderers, fucking uh, Unseen Hand. Or no, not, uh, what was it called? Um, Faceless Villain. Faceless Villain, yeah. Well, that's a trilogy. Yeah, yeah there, there's three of those. Those are good. Yeah. Murder Hornet said you never answered his question, but I don't he know. He never what, asked. I don't question. know what the question was. I didn't see it. Right. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. I mean, you can ask it again. Because, like, yeah. I, it keeps scrolling, and I try to keep up, but it's, like, it's really, really hard. You're in there talking about Jason and the Argonauts. Saw that last night. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, well, we watched most of it, and yeah. then, like, I fell asleep because... You made to watch the rest of it, right, yeah. My sleep is fucked up. Do you know what time I, I got up this morning, or woke up? What? 4 a.m. Really? I woke up at 4 a.m. Damn. And I was going to go back to sleep, and then, it, so, I got back, I I went to the bathroom, and then I got back in bed, and then I just laid there, and I was wide fucking awake. See, this is what I do. So, did. about 5, I just got up. This is what was, I like, did. And made coffee. This is what I do, people. We, we kind of go to bed early, but I like to listen to fucking podcasts when I go to sleep. And I won't quite go to sleep as fast as Jenny does, so I'll go in the man cave. I got another room over there, and I'll fucking sleep on a day bed, listening to the shit. I know I'm going to wake up to take a leak several times during the night. Getting and, old, it's so fun. Yeah, he's just going to... Plus, we're drinking part of the times, and then some... I'm, I'm drinking. I drink a lot of iced tea too. I'm gonna fucking iced get up. tea makes me pee more yeah, than alcohol does. Tea, so <laughs> I'm gonna get up, take a leak. <laughs> Around three or four, which is usually like the first time or second time that I go to sleep or I wake up. After that, I'll get in bed with Jen. Yeah. And I do this shit because I'm I'm thinking that well. I might be able to catch her waking up at around six, and I get, <laughs> get some ass. It never works out though, man. Fucking every now and then. Every now and then, I'm like I wake up at fucking like eight, and I'm like, "Where's that mother? Where where'd she fucking go? She sneaks up out of the bed and starts working without servicing her man." <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to put a sign up. You know, you're not going anywhere without waking me up. Because I love some of that some of that morning action. You know? <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, man. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, sometimes... I'm on all these fucking anabolics. So fucking, yeah. I take all kinds of fucking weird-ass performance fucking drugs and shit. I'm ready. You know what I mean? I'm ready. I'm ready for four women. And she's running from me. You know? Well, sometimes she's you're like you're kind of trying to mack on me and it's like four in the morning and yeah, I was like... I'm and I'm like... And something. I'm trying to go back to sleep. Because I'm like, God damn it. I have a titty in one hand. And drink all <laughs> like that. It's fucking beautiful. And then she's like, I'm going to go to sleep. You know what she said to me a couple days ago? I was fucking macking the shit out of this shit. I'm fucking homing in. I'm fucking coming in for the kill. And she goes, go ahead and do what you got to do. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> it's like, what? And she's like, yeah, just, just go ahead. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was gonna, really tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. So you want me to wake you up when I'm done? What, 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 what are you What are you asking for? It's fucking these women, man. God damn. <laughs> well, I just like I said, I don't know. Just it it pisses me off because yeah. I really kind of hate. I don't hate getting up early because yeah. I feel like I hate sleeping late. Actually, I don't really like sleeping late because yeah. I feel like a loser and I feel like I don't get anything done. So I actually really like waking up early, 
But on the other hand, I also feel like a loser falling asleep at 9.30 p.m. Yeah. That also makes me feel like a loser. Right. So, and, you know, but, like, this morning, I don't know, man. Like, I woke up, and it was 4 in the morning. And I was like, okay, shit. And then I'm, like, wide awake. And I said, well, maybe, like, I went to the bathroom, and then I came back, and I was like, maybe I can go back to sleep, and I couldn't. So at 5 o'clock, I just got up. And then just made coffee. Like, Pookie was so excited. She was like, oh, my God, Mommy, you're awake. And yeah. I was like, yeah. Jason's, Jason is saying that he remembers fucking, what is it, Jason the Argonauts, the skeletons yeah. from Jason the Argonauts. Uh, that's actually one of the best scenes, fucking um I can't imagine, like, fight. Ray Harryhausen. I mean, yeah. don't, like, we, we won't, because I we got to, like, do a review of that. Right. But that he always thought that was, like, his best work in Jason and the Argonauts. It's good. Which, yeah, I mean, it looks... I can't imagine... And I think Ray Harryhausen, I think, like, he um, he largely worked by himself. So I can't imagine... Man, I don't have the patience for that kind of stuff. So I just, like, really admire people that can, like, sit there and do that meticulous little... Because that would drive me fucking crazy. Yeah. I just... There's no way I could do that. No way. I like I like shit that that I can do that I see results like immediately. right away yeah. yeah i don't really want this like oh we're gonna we're gonna f- shoot like f- shirt 30 frames today and then like five months from now we'll see what it looks like fuck that shit <laughs> so I, I do not have patience for that kind of stuff at all so but so i really like admire people that do you know what i mean yeah. and anybody that can do anything that's like really really small and fiddly you know what i mean i've always been like really in awe of those people you know like the people that um can make like little bitty tiny i don't know like they make like little miniatures or you know it's like i'm gonna write the entire lord's prayer like on the head of a pin or some shit like that like i don't know like i i'm really like i admire those people because there's just no way i would i would go fucking insane doing that shit i I don't have the patience and i don't have the manual dexterity for any of that little fiddly kind of shit i'm just like super clumsy i'm like all thumbs Zach says, since I moved back in with my parents, I haven't been falling asleep till 3 a.m. and waking up around 9 or 10. I've never done that before in my life. Um, I lived like that for a long time because I had a job at a newspaper back in the 2000s. And I worked, uh, was it, it was the night shift. I don't know if they call it third shift. It was from 5.30 p.m. until 2 a.m. Yeah, 5.30 p.m. till 2 a.m., yeah. So, um, so yeah, that was the shift I worked. So I actually didn't usually get home until 2.30, and so I didn't go to work or go to sleep until 3. And then, yeah, I would wake up about 9 or 10. So that's about – well, sometimes it was earlier, but but I did that for – shit, I don't even remember how many years. Is Murder Hornets Eight years, in, nine years. Is Murder Hornets in the fucking co- in the comments? He was earlier. I don't know where yeah. he went, though. I want to show y'all. Murder Hornet, that's my boy over in Mexico. He lives around that Mexican border. Did he, did he say you were allowed to He's show the army. Yeah, yeah. I want to sh- I want to show you, uh, finally show y'all a picture of Murder Hornet. There's fucking Murder Hornet right there in the middle. Of that fucking, of that action right there. <laughs> Hold on. I can't get that shit to fucking... Yeah, that's him in the middle. I can't get that shit to fucking... There you go. There he is. Some of that fucking narco fucking cartel action. <laughs> that, that's Murder Jesus Hornet. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's Murder Hornet. Okay. You need to calm down. <laughs> no, it just fell. Throwing shit everywhere. It fell. Yeah, Zach says, I've always gone to sleep between 10 and midnight, and I'm up by 6 or 7. Yeah. I usually fall asleep, like nowadays, um, I usually fall asleep about 10. Although I think I stayed up last night because we discovered on Hulu that they had put up season 13 of Hoarders, and we were like, woohoo! We're watching it. <laughs> I love Hoarders. And I was like, wait, I don't think we've seen this season. I don't think, I think yeah. it was from last year, but I don't think we saw it. So I was like very excited. Mm-hmm. I like that they um, that they now use the whole hour because it's a long show. Now yeah. they now use the whole hour to focus on one person because I feel like the older seasons they used to switch back and forth between two, and I don't like that as much. 
I kind of like the like the deep focus on the one person. Man, that first woman they had. Well, this is kind of true of most of the people that are on here, sadly. But um, man, that first woman they had on there was. Uh, ooh. She didn't seem crazy at first. Like she yeah, seemed. Yeah, until they started taking her shit. She seemed pretty. Well, a lot yeah. of them are like yeah. that. Like a lot of them are like pretty chill. It's like, yeah, I'm like so excited about doing this, and they seem to know that it's bad and everything. But then the second you start taking out, it's like, hey, can we throw away this old egg carton with mold on it? No, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, then yeah. they flip out. Fucking like fun. I know that it's like not rational, but honestly, um, and I said this to him last night when we were watching it. I said I. That's another kind of person that I admire is I admire any psychologist who would willingly um, specialize in dealing with hoarding disorder. Oh, man. Because they, they you must, patience. God, you must be like, have the patience of a saint. Yeah. Because honestly, I'm just watching the shit on TV and I want to strangle these people. Yeah. And I know that that's bad. I know that they can't help it. I know. But it's like, it doesn't make it any less. I'm like, God, I just want to punch this you person. You, it, there's no normal thinking there. That's what I mean. And it's like, that's yeah. really, really, it's hard for me to <laughs> deal yeah. with. And I said, and I'm not even there with them. I'm just watching yeah. their ass on TV. Murder and it's Hor like, and it's frustrating me. So. Murder Hornet jumps up and goes, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Murder Hornet was in the fucking chat earlier. Talking about New Year's Evil. Yeah, he's in there. Didn't we do that movie though? Yeah. No, we did Christmas Evil. Yeah. That's a different movie. Okay, we haven't done yeah. New Year's Evil. I don't think. I don't know, man. We've done so many movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Murder Hornet's my fucking uh, borderland. He's my borderland. Fucking Mexican. <laughs> Mexican fucking... Uh, <laughs> Mexican-American fucking um, dude who... He's my dispatcher. <laughs> he's my dispatcher. You look at him and he's... <laughs> He's up there with his fucking AK and all these other guys you, with all these fucking narco agents and shit. And you go, what the fuck is that? But then in the next shot, you understand that that's fucking Murder Hornet in the movie that he started. <laughs> I got another photo, photograph of Murder Hornet dead on the ground with blood everywhere. Murder Hornet was in a movie called, what's it called? Procedure de Poderi, The Price of Power. And it was a fucking movie about cartels. <laughs> and in the movie, he fucking um, gets shot and gunned down and fucked up. But he, but that that's what that photograph was from. That was from the movie that fucking Murder Hornet was in. But he does live on the Mexican border. And they said they never paid his ass for that movie. <laughs> for being in that movie. I mean, that's yeah. about par for the course, yeah. I feel like. Anytime I, the course, yeah. I do kind of feel like, I mean, anytime you're like any kind of creative thing, cause I've had yeah. this happen to you, like as a graphic designer, as an artist, yeah, it's like, you don't pay. yeah, I mean, most, most of my clients pay me, but a lot of then. times every now and then, yeah, yeah. like people are just kind of like, oop, they just conveniently forget, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then they disappear and you can't find them. Right. So, you know, there's that kind of stuff happening all the time. And I'm just kind of feel like, look, it's like nowadays we have Canva, we have all that kind of stuff. Like, if you don't want to pay somebody to do it, just go on there and do it your fucking self then. Jenny, like, did, Jenny did some voiceover and a song for a fucking movie that was fucking evidently voted one of the worst movies ever. Remember that movie that we went to yeah. and did the thing? That evidently was fucking, that kid that was also involved in that shit fucking sent us the, the links to the ratings. They said it was the worst movie. Worst movie of all times. <laughs> that movie. <laughs> we never saw it. It was just some... It was a movie made by a pizza delivery boy. Which, you know, nothing against pizza delivery boys. Yeah, I'm but, sure some of them are, like, really talented yeah, filmmakers. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, this guy wasn't. Well, he, yeah. He was He was an old guy from California over here delivering pizzas and trying to make them money at the same time. And it, it ended up on Netflix... I don't even remember the name of the movie. I don't even... It wasn't on Netflix. It was on... I thought it was on Tubi. Tubi, is that what it was? Either Tubi or Netflix. And uh, it evidently was the, the worst movie of all time. I mean, it kind of seemed like it would be just yeah. from the script. Yeah. I read Although the Although you're singing it, it was great. You think? I thought it was cool. I listened to I, I listened to you record it. I was like, okay. It was like a punk rock song. I don't know if they used me, though, because I wasn't in the movie, like, at the end. In the end. They I, put somebody else in it. I so. think everything was all just kind of fucking um, cobbled together in that movie. So I don't know if they you, used, it was probably if they used it. my singing or not. It I was, hope not. I don't think I don't think I sang that good, but... 
It sounded cool to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Whatever. It just sounded like punk rock music. <laughs> you know how I am about what's like... Yeah, yeah. I thought that's it was cool. the thing. It's like, I, I think I can sing, but it's like, I'm not singing in front of anybody. I thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the most stressful things I ever did. Really? Yeah. Okay, no, I thought it was cool. Because... And it's dumb because I I know it's dumb. Yeah. Like when I'm in the house by myself, like you know, I sing and I'm like, wow, I sing pretty good. But it's just kind of like yeah. I would never sing in front. We of talked about that movie early on in the show. We were doing the show when that shit happened. That's right, I forgot. And then, um, fucking that dude turned out to be a douche. Fucking uh, um, early on, and then he he ended up like kind of getting kicked out of the club, and he tried to recruit some of our friends to be in his movies and. It just wouldn't work. That dude didn't have any talent. He was a hack. He was a hack movie producer slash director from who had been banished from California, evidently. And he was over here make, uh, working as a pizza delivery man. And uh, that was a trip. He just kind of wandered into the club. And he seemed cool at first, but then the more I started to fucking pay attention to him, the what more is that true of most shit. people? What's that? Isn't that true of most people? What's that? They seem cool. At they seem first. cool, but then more you know, like, this dude's a fucking, fucking And then you get to know them, you're, you're like, like nah, yeah. nah, you, you kind of suck. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Very few people like that you meet are like kind of cool just all yeah. the way through. You know? He tried to make a goth musical movie. And he knew nothing about the gothic subculture. Nothing. Zero. Well, he did, but, like, from a long time ago. Like, yeah. he hadn't really kept Late up. Late 70s, early 80s, maybe. With, which is fine yeah. if you wanted to do something from back then. But I think he was trying yeah. to do stuff that was contemporary, but he didn't know that, like... He didn't know what contemporary was. Right. Like, he didn't right. really know, like, what was going yeah. on in the shit. And nowadays. he was older than us. I mean, yeah, was, he, he was, was much older. Yeah, he was, like, in his late 50s or something. Yeah, late 50s, early 60s. So he was, like, into the shit originally, but like I said, he hadn't really kept up with it or kept yeah. contemporary with it. And like I said, you can still get away with doing, like, retro shit. There's nobody saying that, but the way he was going about it was not... All wrong. ...was not going to work out. Um, what I was talking about uh, people that make miniatures, and Zach said, so, like, Annie from Hereditary. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. And then John Smith said, there's that guy that carves sculptures under the heads of matches. That's right, I've seen that guy. That's fucking amazing. See, like, that kind of shit, man, more power to you. I just wouldn't have the fucking patience. Or, like I said, the coordination to do that. Hugo said, Ray Harryhausen is one of the reasons I do stop motion. I'm a puppet fabricator, so I don't have a say on the script, and most of the time, scripts suck. Yeah, I kind of feel like Ray Harryhausen, he was kind of one of the few people that, a lot of times, and I think Jason and the Argonauts was um, an example of this, was that they would a lot of times kind of tailor the movie to his specific talents you know what i mean so they would kind of change some shit around so he was like hey we want him to make this particular monster so let's write something like that so he didn't get any writing credit or nothing but they always kind of like wrote stuff around like what he would make because he was so well known you know zach says, zach says goth musical i'd watch that well so would i but that's not what he made <laughs> see yeah that's i not mean what he made. yeah I'm trying to think yeah, of, no, like, I mean, I, yeah, I would watch that, too, if it was a good one. Yeah. I can't really think of any kind of, like, God, other than other than Repo the Genetic Opera, which isn't yeah. technically... Well, goth industrial. It's like a goth yeah. industrial-ish yeah. Yeah. one. That one's pretty good, but... Edward, uh, Edward uh, what was the one? Not Edward Scissorhands. Fucking uh, Sweeney Todd was kind of a gothic musical. Yeah, uh, but I'm talking more about like a musical like with contemporary with gothic. contemporary yeah. gothic music that's like set in the gothic scene, mm -hmm. like Grease, but goth Grease. Ooh, yeah, yeah, making me want to see Grease now. Actually, yeah, maybe we should watch Grease after the show. You can watch it after this. That sounds fun. Well, because yeah. because uh, um, you're, you guys are gonna laugh because you know how um, you know how Pookie is real into getting her her little hair brushed. Yeah. And so she'll jump up over there on the sink where the brush is and be and yell until somebody comes over there and brushes her. So it's funny because Tom was over here brushing her before the show. Yeah. And he was doing the... Because you know how in Greece, um, it's Jan, right? Yeah. The, the Jan so character. The so-called fat girl. The so-called fat girl that's totally not fat. Yeah. She's adorable. I actually really like her. Yeah, make a good porn star. 
Well, I like her character. Like she's just like real funny and goofy, and I think brushy, that's brushy, brushy. yeah. She was doing the it's um I pan a yeah. toothpaste if you yeah. didn't know, which was like a pretty popular toothpaste in the fifties, and that was like the commercial that she was singing. And it's funny because I heard Tom over there going like brushy, brushy, brushy. and I was like, yeah, oh my I'm god, I, I do yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like I do that too, like without. Yeah. That's why I laughed when you did it because I was like, yeah. holy shit, I do the I do the I pan a brush a brush a song too. Yeah. But except it's brushy because that's what we call yeah. it for Pookie. Pookie loves the shit. You grab her by, grab her head, and just brush one side in a single direction. You go brushy, 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 and she's fucking leaning into she's it. She's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have little. You know, you guys are gonna laugh too. It's like I have little wall-mounted brushes that are up there, and they're mounted on the on the corner of the wall. So like when she jumps up on the sink. I can brush her on this side, and then she can brush herself on the other side of the wall, like she, on the other side of yeah. the of her face, because she's got her own little self service brush on the side. She just loves getting brushed. Yeah. Not even so much. She doesn't really care about her back or anything like that. She wants you to brush her face, like the sides of her face. She's real into having like her little cheeks brushed. Yeah. And she will just sit there all day and like let. Thank you, you very that. much, Lion Warrior. Thank you very much, bro. Oh, you must be like a couple of like things ahead. No, he's saying telling everybody to fucking hit the thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeffy Art could never get into Greece. Every time I tell my friends, they call me a bad gay, and then I need to tune in, my, turn in my gay card. Yeah, because well, yeah. you don't like Greece. Who said that shit? <laughs> Who said that shit? <laughs> Jeffy Art. Jeffy, go ahead and throw in the gay card. I if don't you, know you, why. I love Greece. No. Actually, I love yeah. Greece too. Also, right. yeah, which you, maybe yeah. that's a controversial yeah. opinion, but I actually I'll go to bat for Greece too. I like that it. live television version of Greece. Is, I have yeah, that I like on fucking that. Blu-ray. Also, that shit's good. Also, I think that was what 2015. 2016, I think, something around that time. They had a live television show of Greece. It was good. Tom Sykes says, Earth Girls Are Easy is a decent musical. Oh, that's right. I forgot that was a musical. I kind of should watch that again. Every now and then, because remember when Julie Brown was a thing? Not downtown Julie Brown. The other Julie Brown. The white one with the red hair. She had red hair, right? If you reddish. don't like Sergeant Pepper's fucking fucking throwing your gay card also. Fucking well, you, I'm I'm willing to give people a now. pass on that because I understand that like a lot of and we're not talking about the album Sergeant Pepper. Obviously everybody in the world likes that album because we're it's amazing. About the movie. We're talking about the movie that yeah. had the Bee Gees in it. Yeah. So it's like I understand Aerosmith. Well, as shit. I don't know. It was was gay it? Shit. Oh yeah. It was disco. It was That's a disco true. album. And the disco I kind of have a soft spot for I have a soft spot for that. Movie, it was great. You know? Thank you very much. Thank you, Granthers. Granthers, are... just priming the super chat pump for the night. <laughs> Prime that super chat pump. Let a motherfucker yeah. make some movie. Let a motherfucker make some money up in this bitch. Jeffy Art so. says uh, about Greece. However, I do like the theory that the story is actually Sandy having a stroke and going to heaven. No. Oh, <laughs> Actually, I, li- I like that too. That's actually Greece pretty funny. Greece is actually about John Travolta fucking imagining that he was straight. That's what. That's what yeah. Greece maybe he, like. John Travolta yeah. is having a stroke he's, he's and imagining stro- what it would be like if he. Yeah, was what straight. it would be like if he fucker was straight. Yeah. Uh, Zach says, Jenny, would you watch this? A psychedelic thriller about people running from their past set in Jamaica. That's the next script I might want to write. I mean, yeah, I, I would probably watch that. To be honest, if it's good, I'll watch pretty much anything. Uh, Richard Brown says Phantom of the Paradise. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, a good yeah, one. Yeah. That's love a good it, one. Love it. It's good. But I'm just saying that it's like now that you mention it, I don't think that there's ever been like a gothic, like with gothic rock, like but a musical. No. Like in that same framework. I mean, there. I'm sure there has been, but it's like I don't. I can't think of one that was made into a movie though. You're talking about Phantom of the Paradise makes me want to see that again. Well, tonight we're just going to have to do a musical. We're going to watch yeah. Grease and Phantom of the Paradise. Yeah. <laughs> Straight people pretending that they were gay. Watching the fucking Phantom of the Paradise. Uh, Victor says, never heard of it. I'm not really sure like what one you're talking about. But what are you talking about, Victor? It might, be the, Sar- it might be the Sgt. Pepper's musical. Yeah, there was a movie called 1978, Sarge- I want to say. Sgt. Pepper's? The movie. No, 80. 81, right? Later. I'm pretty sure it was 19, It was Se- late 70s. Okay. And um, 
It was directed it's great. by it's great I think movie. it was Robert Stigwood. He like directed it or produced it, it or it, something. It's a low budget movie that's like one big long music video that is a tr- that is a fucking um it is basically a Bee Gees tribute album. And excuse me. A Beatles a tribute. A Beatles tribute album. Yeah. Performed by the Bee Gees and Aerosmith and a couple of other artists go, uh, come in there and they George Burns is join, in it. Yeah. And they're Alice they're, Cooper's in it. Yeah, Alice Cooper. And they're doing Beatles songs. Yeah. And Peter try, Frampton was in it. Yeah. That's right. And, and they're trying to make like a concept album out of of about fucking Sgt. Pepper and Mr. Mustard. You yeah. just gotta see it to understand it. Oh, and Steve Martin was in it. Yeah, yeah he was right. Maxwell. Yeah. Maxwell of yeah. Maxwell Silver, Silver Hammer. Hammer fame. Right, right, real good. I saw. That. I feel like that was on Cinemax, yeah. like all the time, like every yeah. day. I must have seen it forty bajillion times. That was my introduction to fucking uh, bondage, fucking robots, fucking. They had the dim, black, shiny. Metal, well, shiny plastic robot girls with all the fucking lights that were kind of like Cylons. Remember that? And the Mr. Mustard fucking out, the Mr. Mustard video. They're yeah. kind of like, they're kind of like, kind of like bondage, a, a BDSM kind of a fucking fetish motif to it. It's them. a weird movie. That's yeah, what it's we're a weird saying. movie. And, I mean, the Bee Gees and Peter yeah. Frampton are star as Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club yeah. Band. And they're from a small town in like Midwest American Americana, yeah, called Heartland. And there are all these musical instruments, right? Are they ma- They're magical, right? They're magical, yeah. And Mister Mustard steals them. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. In his RV. It's di- it's it's a disco movie with fucking <laughs> rock and the Beatles and metal early metal and it's all just kind of a musical you know harder than xanadu which is another good movie i like xanadu. yeah trey well, says my personal favorite is xanadu, yeah, xanadu i like xanadu was, as well xanadu, yeah xanadu was good too. i like xanadu as well yeah Z- xanadu was xanadu was a pretty movie and it had uh i like musicals it, it i don't care good, who knows. yeah i know it's it a musical is it dorky to yeah. like musicals yeah, that's it's, okay. It's dorky and it's it's gay, it's gay man. It makes you a gay man. All right, I'm, fi- I'm fine. You're a gay that. man. Now. I'm fine with that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like appreciating show tunes. <laughs> like she, I'm not like yeah. I, I don't like some music. Like some yeah. musicals can die in a fire, but it's yeah. like a lot of them. I just you know I don't mind them actually. No, they're good. Yeah, I, like I, don't, I don't mind them, and and a lot of them I actually really like. I really I I really like Grease. Yeah, Grease was great. Xanadu. Fucking Repo, the Genetic Opera, Sergeant Peppers, Phantom of the Paradise, Rocky Horror. Yeah, Rocky Horror. What else? Hedvig and the Angry Inch. Did you see that? Uh, also, you had. You would probably like that. Would it? Hedvig and the Angry Inch. That's a newer one, but that one's amazing. I love all the fucking music in that too. Also, um, Sweeney Todd. The mm. Demon Barber of fucking Fleet Street. What yeah, I tend to like ones that are horror-y, yeah, obviously. Yeah, Grease isn't horror-y, but I still no. like it. No, Grease is all positive. Yeah. But well, I li- well, and I like the retro, because I yeah. like that kind of like rockabilly mm-hmm. sensibility to it. Like, you know what I mean? The, so yeah. I like that kind of stuff about yeah. it. <laughs> Victor says I hate musicals. Yeah. A lot of people do. It's like, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Cannibal, yeah, better when you're drunk. They're, yeah, they're, they're more fun. You, yeah. They're more fun. Well, you used to you used to be in them. Oh yeah, you were. You know, Grampers was in one too. You were in all. We were that. in the same ones. We were yeah. in the same drama program. Yeah, we were in musical. Musicals were harder to do, but they were they were more fun. We did Pippin, uh, and we did fucking Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Oh, yeah, and then later one. on, I, I fucking starred in fucking the Fantastics. Later on, as El Gallo, was fucking singing the, who was kind of like the main bad guy. Yeah, so I was in that shit. In in um, Joseph, I did the Pharaoh, which did an Elvis number. That's, it was like, uh, yeah, that's right. It was an Elvis ripoff number. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, in Pippin, I wasn't fucking uh, wasn't fucking uh, good enough then at that time. Fucking our friend Steve had the had the leading role in Pippin. He played Pippin. Yeah, and 
I don't remember the songs. Grampus might remember them, but uh, we did a bunch of shit. And then we did other, just rather black box theater and fucking did Private Wars. Um, did a bunch of other little ones. Um, no, I loved acting. It was good. But you don't want to do that for a living, you know? No. Yeah, we've it, talked about that before. No. No, and you don't want to do that for a living if you're dependent on fucking Hollywood. Fuck them, you know. You have a lot of Hollywood actors that just say fuck Hollywood and they want to go back to these little theaters, you know, because it's instant gratification. You can do a live performance in front of an audience and you. Well, yeah, I kind of feel like a lot of actors who are into acting, like for the craft, a lot of them prefer stage acting because, like you said, it's well, it's kind of like doing a live stream, like doing a live stream, because you're kind of like getting instant feedback. Yeah, instant feedback, and it's a smaller audience, and you can interact. You can interact, and it's it's more of a personal thing, and. You're trying to put on a show for them and deliver. I mean, to be to be honest, like if I was an actor, which I'm not because I'm too self conscious. But if I was, like, I can't imagine. It sounds like a nightmare, like shooting a movie because everything is they shoot everything out of order. Yeah, you have to like do these brief little scenes, um, you know, over and over and over again until you get it right. And it's like from different angles and all this other kind of stuff. I don't understand. And so, in a way, like when you see a performance in a movie that's really, really good, I'm always kind of like, man, amazing. I'm going to, that's amazing because it's like, it it's cobbled together. It's just so piecemeal yeah, and like yeah. cobbled together. The cobbled fact together. that there's any like continuity at yeah. all of that character is yeah. like amazing to me. Yeah, it is. Because it's like, I could never fucking do that. I'd be like, who the fuck am I now? Right. What's going on? Right. <laughs> you know, I'd be like that, like every single scene. A live performance, there's a middle, a begin. there's a beginning, a middle and an end. Right. It's and a story in real you, time. And, right. And you, and, and you know who the audience is. You've been fucking looking at them and you've been delivering the, You've been delivering the goods to them, and you can tell if they're if they're into it or not. Which you feed it, if you know what I mean. You're feeding off of that. That 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 can only happen in a very small theater, and I say a small theater like people under a theater under two thousand. You know that's small. Um, oh, somebody's. Thank you, Victor. Yeah. What are y'all's New Year's resolutions? Uh, I don't really have one. I like, never I, make New Year's resolutions because no. then I'll just beat myself up if yeah. I don't do them right. right. But, well, I mean, I do have things that I, I want to do, like, over the year. Like, I want to finish the novel I was working on. I have another game that I want to make, which I kind of started, but, I've you know, I haven't got that far on it because I haven't had time. Um, you know, shit like that. Make more money. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's the main yeah. thing. <laughs> Win the lottery. That, that's That's my New Year's resolution. Like, so I don't have to fucking worry about shit anymore. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I definitely want to finish that novel, though. And that game that I wanted. But that's kind of like... Um, yeah, Gramther said, Graham was one of the brothers in Joseph. Tom was Elvis. Yeah. Our friend was Joseph. Also, Marilyn Ricecub was one of the sisters. Yeah. If you guys know who Marilyn Ricecub is, she was... She starred in fucking a, a TV series called 24. Yeah, she was on 24, yeah. She was... Actually, she's my ex-girlfriend. We're we're still friends. We fucking she's seen this show. She's also liked a lot of shit that we've fucking done. She loves Jenny. She says she's fucking really cute. She, that's what she said about you. Really? Yeah. She says she's really. Ooh, cute. Ooh, a famous person. Then. Yeah. She yeah. says I'm cute. Yeah. She's, oh, sorry, she's that's really like cute. I just yeah. watched that uh, real yeah. off stop motion thing the other day. <laughs> she thinks I'm cute. Mary Lynn was fucking cool. <laughs> And Mary, Mary Lynn was she's a comedian really uh, even though she's done a lot of acting she it actually really is funny Gramps will tell you she, that chick was fucking goofy man she was funny as fuck as a kid did a really funny she her her sense of humor is a lot more adult than it was you know because we're we're grown up you know we're older now when she was a kid she was just fucking hilarious super goofy everybody loved her she's funny cute too I like funny people yeah like legitimately funny people yeah uh thank you very much we got two super chats one from Jeffy Art it's interesting to compare the acting culture of LA versus New York City yeah there's a big difference yeah and Uh, and London well that too yeah he said LA seems very commercial or superficial whereas Broadway still has bohemian roots yeah Yeah, because like I said I kind of feel like New York City that's where you want to go if you want to like be an actor because that's where all the stage shit is yeah you know what I mean whereas if you want to be in the movies you know you go to LA so there is kind of like a different kind of thing there yeah although I'm gonna say this and fucking this is the truth okay 
the best English speaking actors are from England. Yeah. Those dudes are fucking great, man. They're really good. They take the craft very seriously. Um I mean, I would take it seriously if that was my job. It's an art yeah, form, just like yeah, any other art form. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, Don't the, shit on it. The British have been the best for fucking 100 years easily. You know, more than that. It goes back to Shakespeare. They're really they take that shit super seriously. Yeah. Look at the movies that they've made. Look at the the American movies that the British made. A lot of things that you think are Amer- are American are actually British, like Star Wars. That's a British movie. You know, um, even though you had an American cast or the leads were American. All the supporting cast and everybody who made well, and the, the crew and everything. The crew, oh, yeah. That, that's, yeah, yeah. And you go back to British movies, and then you look at a lot of the best American shit from fuck off the down fucking Netflix, you know, fucking Walking Dead and shit. All the best actors off that were British. And fucking the dude that these these dudes are good enough to where you know me being southern, I'm thinking I'm looking at a southern actor, and it's the turn it's a British guy. But they can do I remember accent. you being shocked when I you found shocked. out that Andrew Lincoln was British. Yes, yeah, absolutely shocked. I think a lot of people knew because he'd been in Love yeah. Actually, that yeah. British like Christmas romance movie yeah. or whatever. So he'd been in that. So a lot of people had heard him talk before. But yeah, I had actually forgotten because I don't like Love Actually. Yeah, I but, mean, he was like some straight out of Georgia or Alabama. You know, I was like, that's that's a southerner. You know, no, he's British. Yep. <laughs> you know, now. Well, wait a minute. We had another super chat that I, okay. I didn't get done. All right. Um, thank you very much, Zach. Betty Davis said, "If you impressed a film crew with acting, you know you did a good job, because yeah. crews have seen everything. Right. Regular audiences are more easy to impress. Right. Hey, that's like a good. Yeah, I guess that's like a good gauge, isn't it? Right. Victor says, "I heard all the zombies in Walking Dead are Meryl Streep. She's that good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Richard Brown said Idris Elba too. Elba too. Yeah, because he's been in a lot of... Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll see a movie and it's like I'm not even thinking about it and I just think like it's an American dude or something like that. And then you see him in an interview later and I'm like, oh, it's a Brit again. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only real Southerners out of fucking The Walking Dead was a dude that played Merle Dixon. Merle? What was his name? Um, but he's, uh, he's from Mississippi. And then the guy who played Daryl might be... He Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. Um, I think he might be Southern. Yeah, I can't remember where he's from. He's from the South somewhere. I yeah. Think. And uh, you would Georgia? never know. No, you would I never know that that British dude that was in there with them was, wasn't was Southern. Interestingly, um, Andrew Lincoln. Yeah. Andrew Lincoln, yeah. He was, yeah. He's the main guy, like yeah. Rick. Rick. Um, he was in an episode of Cabinet of Curiosities, yeah. the Guillermo del Toro Netflix series. And he played an American in that, too. Although he played a New Englander. Yeah. So, and he did, like, pretty good, I thought. And also, it was him and um, Essie Davis, who was also playing an American, even though she is Australian. Because yeah. she was in The Babadook. Now, who was the guy that played fucking um, Dar- uh, Merle? Um, he was also... Uh, Michael Rooker. My Rooker, that's right, my... He was, he in was also of, in uh, yeah, Henry, Henry Portrait of a Portrait, Serial, Serial Killer. Killer. He was in Squirm. Slither. Slither. Yeah, Not Slither. Squirm. That's Squirm, the worm. That's, Slither. That's the shitty worm He was movie. in a bunch of movies, yeah. <laughs> he's I'll great. watch. I'll watch anything. Michael Rooker is Rooker's one of those fucking, actors. Yeah, he's good. It's yeah. just kind of, it's him, like Jeffrey yeah. Combs, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. He's like one of those kind of actors. It's like, I don't even care if the movie's shitty. I'm gonna, if you're in it, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. He's he, one of those kind of Rooker guys. was also in that very last really good uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It was called Fifth Day or Sixth Day, some shit like that. Uh, he played he played one of the fucking hitmen in that. That's right. Rooker was good because he was, he was, he, he was authentic. He was an authentic Southern dude. He had... Um, uh, he had a hardness to him. And if you look at him, what was funny is that he was a very deceptive actor. When I first saw him in that Henry portrait of a serial killer, that motherfucker scared the shit out of me. Man, he did. He was, he was so good in that. I thought I was seeing a real serial killer with that. Yeah. I was, And, and to watch him fucking... Basically, psychologically and physically torture those fucking women and shit. Before, I, I was, I was kind of like, God damn! I was fucking. That's a re- fucked up movie. Really freaked out by that damn movie. 
But what was weird about it is that he was horrific. He was a horrific dude. But if you stood back and looked at him, he was very handsome. That was a very yeah. handsome dude who could convince you that he was a fucking monster. Um, yeah, he's fucking great. Yeah, he was fucking really good. He's one of those he's actors. Really good. See, and we've talked about this before, like the distinction. I guess this is disappearing somewhat, but it's still kind of like a distinction that people make between like your A-list, like big, you know, actors and stuff that can like... Yeah you know, open a movie, you're just, you're like your Tom Cruise type characters. Like I said, that's he's like older now. And then you have character actors, which means, you know, you're never going to yeah. be like a romantic lead or you're never going to like a lead. And that's like yeah. a shame because a lot of the time character actors are way more interesting because the thing about these kind of like A-list big actors, it's like a lot of them are like, you know, maybe good looking or they're yeah. in these big franchises and stuff, but there's not really much to them otherwise. Right. They just have like some kind of, charismatic star quality but somebody like tom cruise or will smith or somebody like that it's like you know depending on the role they're fine but it's like they always kind of play the same role they're always like themselves because they're bigger than life yeah. whereas i feel like character actors are actually like actors yeah before they're movie stars yeah. and so i to that to me they're a lot more interesting yeah. i enjoy watching those kind of people more yeah. than big very like, much so stars when rooker know. was doing merle when he was doing merle and fucking the walking dead i bought that 100 percent. i believe that there was a merle like that was a real person yeah and that and that's like <laughs> that you know that's a great sales job you really have to be a good actor to get you to get a person to buy especially i was a trained actor i'm buying it that there was a merle dixon you know I believe That's that what, there was a Merle Dixon. My, yeah, he my, brought it to me. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, my gauge yeah. is, you know, do I forget that that's an actor? Right, yeah. I forgot who that was. I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. it didn't yeah. occur to you that that was like, an, like you get right. totally immersed. Right. And, 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 and his younger brother, Daryl Dixon, I bought into that too. For, for as long as I watched that series... That series started to go sideways towards the Norman end. Reedus is from Florida, by the he's way. He's from Florida. That's yeah. still Southern. Yeah. yeah. So he's got it. That's it. Right. He he's was from, down. He's he was, from Hollywood, Florida. Hollywood, Florida. Yeah. He uh, he was down here doing one of the horror conventions. I remember. remember That's that? right. Yeah, you yeah, had yeah. To wait yeah. Like three hours to see him. And yeah, fucking, he had one of the longest. The lines, lines was fucking giant. To, to see him. You know what? Everybody that I know that has met him said he's just the nicest. Great. He's the nicest man yeah, ever. Would be great. Yeah. Said that he's just like really, really humble, and he's yeah. just like really, you know, he's super famous. But you could make whole movies with Norman Reedus. Fucking, they need to get him out of the fucking Walking Dead, put him in the damn fucking starring role. I mean, he's yeah. I mean, he's yeah. been in movies, but yeah. he was he actually was in Blade. He was. In he Blade. was. Yeah, he was in, uh, he was in yeah. um. What the fuck was, was that? Blade Two. Was that fucking movie called the? Uh, what's the one with the about the hitman? God damn it. Uh, which hitman? I'm getting old. I can't remember. Uh, about the hitman. All I can remember, I don't think you saw it. Okay. But it's like, it's a pretty, somebody will remind me, I'm sure. Because it's like, it's a famous movie. I just can't, I just blanked on the title at the moment. Um, but Boondock Saints, thank you. That's what it was, Boondock Saints. Uh, so yeah, that was probably his best known movie role. But I loved him in, if you guys saw Masters of Horror, the John Carpenter one like the episode that was called cigarette burns he was in that and udo kier was in that and that was like that's probably my favorite episode of that whole series um tammy says they're gonna do a daryl dixon spinoff are they yeah, yeah i good, heard yeah. that camp guys talking about it says uh john malkovich i actually love john malkovich he's one of my favorite actors of all time john malkovich jeremy irons like i like anybody like that um john malkovich actually my favorite role of his was probably Dangerous Liaisons, which is one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love that fucking movie. I've seen it like a million times. <laughs> ah. I've seen it a million times. Um, yeah, they're talking about Gene Hackman. Um, yeah, see, to me, like, I don't... And this is male actors, female actors, whoever. Um, I just think... I, I like character actors, who they call... They're just more interesting. I don't really like these just kind of like stars you know what i mean because they're just very samey 
Like a lot of times you see a movie and it's fine. They're fun and it's, you know, and it's like a good time and everything. But it's like, I don't really, I don't really buy them as, I kind of feel like, and I know you're going to get on my case about it, but that's kind of why I'm not like a huge fan of Tom Cruise because it's like every single movie that he's in and same with like Will Smith or people like that. It's like, you know, they're fine as far as it goes. But whenever you see a movie, you're like, oh, it's Will Smith or, oh, it's Tom Cruise. It's like you, he never like disappears into a role where you forget that that's an actor. That's never going to happen. They're just, Um, they're too big to disappear into a role. And I'm not saying that that can't happen because I mean, Tom Cruise has been in stuff like he was in Magnolia. He was in like some stuff that, um, like I said, when he plays a bad guy or he plays an asshole, like then it's easier for him to like get immersed. And I'm not saying that it's not. Because look at fucking... Um, Tom Cruise is good, though, man. I'm gonna tell no, you. I know. He's, he's I know. Good. I know he, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's good. But the thing about it is that, you know, even people that are, like, super, super famous, and this is one thing that I always kind of think of. Look at, like, um, Charlize Theron, right, mm. who is one of the most beautiful women on the planet. She's a massive, massive star and everything like that. When she was in that Aileen Warnos movie, oh, yeah, Monster, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot... You forgot who that was. That, that was I forgot right. that Aileen Warnos was dead. I thought that right. I was watching Aileen Warnos. Yeah, just... She just vanished into hag. that role. Yeah. And that... I watched I saw it in the theater. And for a time, I was watching it going, holy shit, this fucking bitch right here. No, and then she's I was, good. And then I was like, holy shit, I forgot... I forgot that yeah. alien, the real Alien Morris was dead, that that was like an actor playing her. Okay. And that very, very rarely happens. The only other time that's happened was when Martin Landau played Bella Lugosi yeah, in yeah. Ed Wood. You forget that that's Martin I Landau. forgot that that yeah. was Martin Landau. The thing is with Cruz. Thank you, Senor Sticks. What, is it, what did he say? Must it be the last stream of the year? Yeah, well, we're going to do a stream on Sunday. We're going to do a stream on Sunday. Yeah, just I'm just saying it's year. the last one of 2022. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? To make it sound more dramatic. But we're going to do a, we're going to do one on Sunday like usual. So. Yeah. Um what were you talking about? You're talking about um Martin Landau. Martin Landau. Okay. Ed Wood. I was going to go back to I was going to go back to to Cruz. There's a certain Cruz does certain roles based upon he wants to be in certain kind of movies. All right? Yeah. And um, there are certain things he can do and there are certain things he can't do. So I understand why he ends up in the movies that he does. Yeah, I do too. But he does have a bit of range. Um, the Yeah, I'm he, not saying that he doesn't. He I does. thought he did a great Lestat. Uh, it is not like the book Lestat, but I thought he did a great Lestat. He did... Um, a good assassin. He did a real good ass- assassin and collateral. He can play a bad guy. Um, I like him better when he plays a bad he, guy. Yeah, he's a good bad guy, but he can't be a bad guy all the time, or they would, or it would be like fucking, you know, like what they said <laughs> in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where you got fucking Bob Crane kick- in tight pants kicking your ass all the time, and then, <laughs> um, but he, uh, no, he he he's been good. At least good in everything. I thought he was great as Ethan. Hunt. Was it? Was his name Ethan Hunt from the fucking? Yeah. From from. Um, yeah, I'm not saying he's not good. I'm just good. saying that he can't vanish into a role in the same way that a quote unquote character actor can. I think he probably could. That's what I'm thinking. I think he could, but I think his management and his fucking, uh, what do you call it? His. Uh, his people won't let him take certain roles because they don't want to hurt his career. That's what I think it is. Um, I think, I think, well, here, here, okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Okay. When I was a kid growing me. up, <laughs> Dustin Hoffman was considered the greatest fucking ac- American actor of all times. Okay. Because he could disappear into a role. But you go back and look into that shit, not really. That's Dustin Hoffman. I mean, he's still Dustin Hoffman. He's still Dustin Hoffman. But he disappears okay. into a role more than Tom Cruise does, I would argue. I think Tom Cruise could do better. I think. I don't know him. about I think, that, I think though. so. I don't know about I that. I think he probably could. I mean, the thing about it, and we've talked about this before, like, uh, most actors have, um, you know... Uh, I think... Mean- <laughs> well, most actors have roles that they get comfortable with, whether that's what they want to do or not. But it's like, because sometimes they get typecast, you know. So that's always just kind of like the roles that they play. Charlie like, Theron is fucking a better actor uh, than or actress than either of those two. She just is. Yeah, big time. She just is. Charlie yeah. Theron is amazing. Yeah. 
And the thing about it is that, yeah. I mean, she's like as glamorous as shit, but then like she's nah. in something like yeah. Monster, or she's in something like Fury Road. Or, yeah, she's or she fantastic. In, or Prometheus. She yeah, she's fantastic. Prometheus. Yeah, she she's better than Tom Cruise and. And, and fucking and, well, she's, and Dustin Hoffman. She's believable. Like yeah. I said, I don't think I've ever seen a movie with Tom Cruise yeah. in it that I forgot that that was Tom Cruise ever. She's just she just doesn't have call in much attention. You know, she doesn't. She does. She she's not real well known, or you know, well, she's very well known. What am I talking about? Yeah, she, she's <laughs> she's just not attracting the attention because hollywood theater is not what it once was had she appeared 20 years ago or 30 years ago she would have been a fucking classic she's a late comer to this scene and this is towards the end of hollywood if you ask me um but she she's a she's great she's real great she's very underappreciated um i think some of it is partly because she plays female roles female roles tend not to be leads they tend to be supporting roles although it wasn't in fucking um monster and monster is just great but not a lot of people went to go see monster god and monster most, is most, so good most people go to see it's these, not a fun time no or anything but no. it's a great fucking movie most people go to see these fucking tentpole movies and they yeah. tend to have male leads and uh, I'm not super into those. Like, yeah. I enjoy them, but they're not... They're generic. Yeah, they're I, don't, generic. I don't really, like... I mean, if I'm going to watch yeah. some cinema, that's not what I'm going to watch. You no. know what I'm saying? As far as, fe- as far as actors go, female actors, fucking... Well, okay, I'm going to say fucking Theron is fucking the best female actor, if you fucking did it. She's the best actress. I mean, she's one of the best ones I can yeah. think of that's still... And, and up there with the males, I mean right now oh yeah easily easily she might be the best actor she might be she it's got to be in the running i would think right well the thing about her is that she has a great i mean she just has great range right she can play all kind of different roles and she never sticks out as being like not believable you know what i mean she's always believable and as far as males actors go I'm julianne fucking, moore that's another good pick yeah i as, like her too as far as male actors go with contemporary what's going right now i'm gonna say fucking tom hardy i love tom hardy tom yeah. hardy can do anything and and if it requires physicality he's gonna do that he'll get jacked if he has to he'll get fat if he has to he'll get fucking skinny if he has to and that bitch can act okay Every fucking movie I've seen, He's hardcore. Hardy brings it. A big respect. All right. And Theron and Hardy are real fucking close. You know, I'd probably say that that might be it right there. You know, they might be. Maybe that's why thing. Fury Road like made me squeeze so hard. Yeah, that's it right. Was just kind of like, yeah. yeah. God damn it! I loved that movie. We it's saw that movie. movie. We saw great Mad movie. Max Fury Road. We saw it six times in, yeah. the, in the theater, right. and we've seen it a bunch of times since then. Yeah, I own it, and fucking that's one. Of the I best never movies. get sick of that. One movie. of the best movies. God damn it! It's so good. One it's so movies. good. And I just you, love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> that whole series is one of the best. The weakest entry is the American entry for the Thunderdome. The, well, the, the rest of them, the Australian ones, do? are fucking great. Fucking. Um, hey, and, the Australians can make a movie, man. When they want to, the Kiwis can also. When they want to, that that's a fucking great director. Just most of the time, they're just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, they, don't <laughs> they don't give a shit. <laughs> but every time I've seen like an Australian movie, I'm just like, God damn, that was a, that was a fucking amazing movie. You know what I mean? Fucking they're, dude shows up to show. It's just like the Koreans. It's yeah. like you know what I mean. When every time you see it, when yeah. they make when they want to make a movie, they just yeah. kind of come in and be like, "Here's our movie," and they're like, "Ah, oh, that's like yeah. way better than our movie." Yeah. What the fuck? Like they made Parasite, but I saw the Devil. Right. Holy Train to Busan. Holy yeah. shit! Jesus Christ, you guys, you're you're making us look bad. <laughs> when Fury Ro- <laughs> when Fury Road came out, they were like, "Get the fuck away, back the fuck up." Here's a movie, and people were like, "Hell yeah." Hell yeah, yeah, that's a movie. That's a fucking movie. <laughs> fucking right, that's a movie. <laughs> and, you know, that doesn't happen very often, though. What's his name? George what? George Miller. George Miller, yeah. George. Miller. I just imagine... And he George... said another movie was coming. I mean, George Miller is, like, old as fuck. He's old as dirt. He better get out... 
And he's... the funny thing is that he came out like yeah. I kind of feel like oh action movie action movie and then he's like <clears throat> pardon me gentlemen and yeah. then like that yeah. movie comes out and he's yeah. like thank you bye yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone was like he said you know people were like well when's the next one coming out he says it's coming out soon we're gonna make it he may have been bullshitting but then they said well what happened if you die and he said that mad the mad max property was in good hands that he had given it to guys who understand who knew what yeah yeah so we'll, we'll see Zach had given us another super chat. Okay. He says, I find the most talented American actresses to me are African American. I don't know why. They seem more genuine, emotionally open, I guess. Yeah, maybe maybe that's Well, you gotta name some names. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, I, I don't know. For, for me, Eddie Murphy, I grew up watching Eddie Murphy movies. And a lot of that didn't have to do with his acting skills. It was a lot of that had just had to do with his character and the scripts. Okay. Early well, he Eddie was movies, another one was that he was great. always Eddie Murphy in he the was, movies, he beat but himself, right. but somehow like with him it, it worked, worked though. It worked just fucking, because he was such he was so yeah. like charming. Yeah, I was with fucking Eddie through all the fucking Beverly Hills Cops, the fucking um, uh, what's the one where he was fucking Forty Eight Hours, another Forty Eight Hours. That that was good. It was before Beverly Hills Cop. And then, uh, man, you know, I liked Vampire in Brooklyn. And I was gothed out at that time. I was a goth kid. I liked Vampire in Brooklyn. But I'd seen fucking Blackula, all right, and, and Scream, Blackula, Scream. So I don't think people understood the context of fucking Blackula, uh, of fucking um, of Vampire in Brooklyn. Uh, I got it, you know I mean? That was a great movie. Um, Eddie, 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 when, and then his new shit, Dolomite is My Name, fucking fantastic movie yeah I love that movie and uh, Coming to America 1 and 2 Coming to America 2 was good um, not as good as the first one but nah, it was, well, it was, it was, it was PG right. is why if it was R rated it'd be better yeah they really needed not but, to but uh, he, he's working on new shit it, and, you know Eddie Murphy was is a throwback to another era but it was a better era okay he can deliver if he's got a, if he's got support behind him. Murphy's gonna be able to make a good fucking. Now some people are saying, well, his shit sucked. All that, Mr. Doolittle, Doolittle, and this and that. Haunted he, Mansion. Yeah, Haunted Mansion. <laughs> I guarantee, you, if you go back and watch those old movies, you'll enjoy those more than some of this new shit that's out. Well, I don't know about that. Nah, some of it, it was all pretty good. The standards were higher back then. Uh, I don't know about that either. I think they were. <laughs> Some of the shit they make today fucking sucks. You can go back and watch that stuff. It's just entertainment. Maybe it's when you have a when you have a bunch of hits, okay, and then you come out with something that's good or it's not good enough. Is what the way they feel about it. Well, the because, thing, yeah. If if you come yeah. out the gate swinging and yeah. you make like all this really awesome, awesome shit, shit. Yeah. like yeah, well, anything, you something good, anything you make is enough. like not gonna like live up right. to. Right, I think that was part. So of So in a lot of ways, you should probably start out shitty. Exactly. So then that way, <laughs> don't the, don't come yeah. right out the gate with like, oh my god, it's yeah. the best movie ever, because then everything like that ever after that's gonna be like a letdown. With the know? Murphy products, the, the 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 bar was set high from the beginning. So he was already fucking kind of shooting himself in the foot, but I, I, you know, fucking some of the shit that's long forgotten. I, I have this shit on Blu-ray, or 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 DVD, and I go in there and I watch it, and I fucking love it. Like I love Golden Child. And I, you know what, I, I, I think movie. I said this before, I but it's like, I really, really loved that movie in the 80s, but then yeah. when I saw it again, I was like, mm, I don't like this as much I as still I like used it. to. I, st I, just, I still liked it, but I didn't like it as much as I, I used to. I just have a certain nostalgia for, for that, you know what I mean? Because I'm not a real nostalgic person, you know what I mean? Like, I'm willing to, like, watch shit that I saw, like, a long time ago. And be like, is this still good? Like, am I still enjoying this? You know what I mean? I, I like still, it. I liked The Golden Child, but I didn't, like, I used to love it, like, back in the 80s. I'm like, I would watch it, like, every single time it was on. Yeah. But when I saw it again, I was like, nah, this isn't as good as I remembered. <laughs> it well, wasn't as good as I remembered. things changed. But, I mean, well, the thing about it was that some movies that I saw from back then, like, I saw them again, and I'm like, oh, this is absolutely still as good as I yeah. remembered. But that one was not. I liked I it. Did, I didn't like it as much. I liked it. I liked it. The demon and shit, and they were trying to make the little fucking the little boy eat the fucking porridge with all the blood in it. Yeah, I, I, I liked it. Yeah, 
Gramther says other characters you actually kind of believe existed: uh, Tony Soprano, Archie Bunker, yeah, Willem Dafoe in the Lighthouse. Oh, yeah. Willem Dafoe, that's another actor I really, yeah, really like. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Jeffy Art says, I agree with Tom. I think Cruz uh, had or has the potential to be amazing, but his management team won't let him. Right. Do you think his acting limitations could be a Scientology thing? Probably. Uh, no, what I think it is, well, Scientology is part of it. Grantor says, my New Year's Eve resolution for the world, stop talking about Tom Cruise. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Tell me about Tom Cruise. Here, 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 that here, was a long time ago. Yeah, I got behind. Here's the thing. The Tom Cruise Inc., okay, and his fucking support see him as an industry. You know what I mean? As a fucking, as a business. They can't take a loss. And they're worried about image. So they make sure he is only in movies where he's kind of the leading man and uh, pretty much a, a noble character, really, is what, what they're always trying to be. So so he's going to be limited right there. Yeah, I that mean... Right there is a limitation. If you never let yourself be morally gray or a bad guy... Right. I mean, you're you're cutting yourself off from, like, a potentially from a really, of, really interesting the clo- set of roles. The closest, the closest he did from ever playing a bad guy, of course, would be Collateral. Okay? From, from the movies I've seen so far. It was a great movie. Has he ever been a straight-up villain villain? See, even in Collateral, he was an admirable the, villain. See, that's what I'm saying. So that was the thing. Now, I haven't seen all of his movies, so I don't know. Has he ever just been like a straight-up villain so. villain where he didn't have any redeeming qualities so. whatsoever? See, I'm kind of doubting right. it. He's and, always like, well, he's a hitman, but he's like, he's not one of the bad hitmen. You know what I mean? Like, he's, He is kind of cool. He's still pretty cool. He is very, you know, no, he, he is Like, competent. he just won play, so like, he wouldn't yeah. do, like, Michael Rooker and play, yeah. like, a, you a know, scumbag. Henry Lewis and just play, like, a scumbag. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have a lot more admiration for actors that will just go all in and play a scumbag. Yeah. Tom that Cruise has no will never quality. play a scumbag. They won't allow him to play a scumbag. I mean, even though he's played some characters I know, like, that had scumbag qualities, but he also had, like, good qualities. Yeah. You know. A lot of it is, and then his, his, characters or the, the the characters he's playing always seem to have what you would call in Scientology OT powers. Okay. They they have the force slightly. Uh he's never planned he's never gonna play a guy who doesn't have OT powers. And he's never gonna play a guy who's a fucking scumbag. Now Ben and brings up a- Tropic Thunder now, he did play a pretty scumbag character in Tropic Thunder. I'd have yeah, to see that again because I haven't, haven't seen it in a long time. You would probably love Tropic Thunder. Everybody right tells me to watch it. They said I'd love it. You yeah. would love it. Yeah. You would love it. Yeah. I'll see it. I haven't seen it in a long time, but you, that is absolutely right up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and he does play, I like, I can't remember if he had, like, redeeming qualities or not, but he was, like, a pretty shitty character in that, yeah. So... Camp guy said Robert Mitchum was a good bad guy character. Yeah. It's like I said, I always just feel like, and I feel like a lot of actors, like I said, actors that actually really enjoy acting and take the craft of acting seriously, they always say they want to play bad guys because bad guys are a lot more interesting. Good guys yeah. are kind of boring. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and not necessarily like good guys, but people that, you know, are like actual people that have like different, you know, facets and different layers and stuff like that. So how it's long, like. How long have we been uh, doing the show? One hour and 32 okay, minutes. 33 sure. minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah, Eyes Wide Shut. He was... Uh, he had to, I thought he did a great job in Eyes Wide Shut. Great Kubrick flick. I want to see it again, actually, now that you just mentioned it. I love Kubrick stuff. Um, good movie. Kubrick trying to tell us something. And it was true. He's trying to tell us, you know, fucking about those child island men. Those guys on the islands with these children that's what he's trying to say um he must have known about it and then he goes about uh, he goes about telling us about other scams about guys using their daughters to fucking as a as a way of blackmailing other men and weird shit like that um Cruz played an, basically an unlikable guy in that um, kind of a douche, if you ask me. He was a douche. Kind of a stiff douche. But see, I couldn't tell, yeah, watching I, that movie, if he was supposed to be a douche, or if that was just his natural Tom cruise like, coming through. Tom said, Tom Cruise said he didn't like that character. 
that that character was. I did not like that, that character yeah, either. Yeah, he was that, he was a jackass. He, he, he was, was a jackass. Jerk. So he I was mean, a jerk, and he was yeah. like very entitled, and he yeah. was just kind of like, well, I'm just gonna bust right. my way into this like top secret party where I wasn't invited, yeah. and all this other kind of crap. Right. So you know what that's mean? what you're supposed to, you're supposed to not like that guy. Okay, that's good. Well, because, like I said, I think that was one of the things that threw me off about that movie was because it was Tom Cruise. I'm like, well, Tom Cruise always kind of comes across, even when he's supposed to be ostensibly likable, he always kind of comes across as, like, a, a very cocky asshole to me. So it's like when I was watching that movie, I was like, now, am I supposed to want to punch this guy or no? Well, he was worried about whether or not his fucking wife was giving the pussy away, but then he's going to these sex parties. Remember well, that? see, that's what killed me about it. And she yeah. wasn't even given the pussy No, away. no, no. She just good. said she had, like, a fleeting no, fantasy about it. She just thought about it. it. Yeah. Thought about it. Yeah, like, yeah. I saw this hot guy, yeah, and, he, and, he was and I was just kind of like, yeah, right, yeah. oh, you know, maybe, I, maybe I'd maybe i want to jump on that dick. But she didn't yeah. do it. No. She thought about it for, like, You're five right. minutes. Thought and then she about was like, that motherfucker's abs. And right, fucking, and then she's and, like, oh, that's, yeah, that's cool. And then, like, it went away. And then, like, she tells him that. he held it against her. And he goes through this big, huge thing. And yeah. I'm just like, son. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Right. What is your fucking problem? Right. And then he goes out and does stuff actually. Yeah. She didn't do anything. No. She thought about it. No. Well, fucking Cruz. For like a minute. Well, that, that, that was why Cruz said that that dude was a douche. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, man? So you're going to go sneak out on your wife and like go through this whole thing? Because she thought about she for thought a minute. about dude's abs. So you're going to go out and fuck these girls. <laughs> and <laughs> how does that make any sense? <laughs> well, that was part of that was part of Kubrick. Kubrick knew how to fucking Kubrick understood. He understood the mindset of the fucking of a mundane. I guess so. That's like, yeah. I mean, he really did kind of like hit hard that whole like double standard kind of thing. It was a double standard, right? Because it's like, she didn't even have to do anything. No, She's just, just like, oh, about was I glanced at this guy, like, in a hotel. It's like, she didn't know that dude. She didn't yeah. talk to that dude or nothing. Yeah. She's just like, oh, it'd be nice to, like, jump on that dude's dick or something like that. Right, yeah. Like, for a second. Yeah. And then, like, he took that as, like, license. Oh, I'm going to go out and do whatever the fuck. I'm going to go to these yeah. big sex parties and all this other yeah. kind of shit. Like, I can do whatever I want now. Yeah. Typical. Don't do that, dude. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do <laughs> I was fucking just a couple weeks back, man. For a couple couple months back, me and Jim were at the fucking club. I'm fucking at the other end of the bar getting a drink because it's all crowded. Young good dude comes up, offers Jan a fucking drink. Okay, she turns his ass down. Her I head got big though. I of wasn't course. mean. No, no, no. But, I but, just said, well, and I already had one, and, and I didn't want yeah, him to get like you don't ideas. go up there and go, who, what the fuck is going on here? Women have egos too. You know what I mean? It's good that they get confirmation from these young dudes that yeah, they're still attract. You're still attractive, Jan. These well, young men coming well, gee, after you. Well, thank you. You're still attractive. They're coming after you. Although to Fucking, be honest, I'm like just, a little weirded out because it's like no, I don't really. That's how it is. Well, I know that, but it's that's like I don't is. really. I feel kind of bad. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel kind of bad because it's like. One, I already had a drink. Like, yeah. hey, I'm not gonna turn down free alcohol, okay? But it's right. like one, I already had a drink. It was like almost full. Two, um, I, I don't like that feeling of entitlement or be or you know now now you feel like I owe you something. Yeah. So it's like some that always makes me like really uncomfortable. <laughs> so I'm always just kind of like, and I hate being put in that position actually because I don't like having to be a dick to somebody. Yeah. I mean, unless they're being a dick to me, and then I don't have a problem at all. It, Jenny, but if they're like a nice person, then he seemed like a nice dude. It was normal. He was just he no, just I like, know, yeah, but it's just like normal. I always feel just bad. Normal. Because now I'm like now I'm in a position where I just have to be like no I don't want it. and then sometimes they try to like convince you it's like no for real and no. I'm just like oh shit no. please don't make me like yell at you no he was well. just trying to do what men do <laughs> and of course you know because I'm very introverted and I don't like putting being put in positions I don't get like mad, that I, you know I, see I don't get I don't get mad about that because that kind of affirms like yeah I'm with a, a desirable woman of course. You know what I mean? If fucking the dudes weren't interested, then when I'm not doing my job, you know what I mean? That's how I'm looking at it. What is, what is your job exactly? My job is to fucking, you know, my job is to be with a beautiful woman. What are you talking about? If they're not, if they're not, if they're <laughs> must not, be nice that's I'm not doing now. good. If they're, you know, I'm not doing good if, if they're not after you. You know what I mean? So that's, you know, that's just how it is. 
Well, Gramther says, most people know buying someone a drink has no strings attached, but not everyone thinks so. See, that's what I mean. You never know. Uh, no, no. This With this dude, no. He was... That's what I mean. And no, that's... He was a young guy trying to fucking... Right. And it's like, when you could kind of tell... Like like I said, he wasn't obnoxious. No, or, he was cool. He was really nice, he actually. Was, he was doing what I was doing but, at his age. He's yeah, doing but you can tell that. that that's kind of what he was doing. He was you know doing, what I mean? He, he was, was making was, the rounds. He was 20-something, and that's what they do at that age. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so... No, I understand. But see, but the thing about it, though, is that... <laughs> and maybe if you're, you know, being a woman, like, in those kind of situations, you actually never know, like, if the dude's going to be cool about it or if he's going to uh, go off. Because I've yeah. had that happen, too. I've had... Like, you know, some guy, like, will come up and be like, hey, can I buy your... So I'm like, no, you know, no, thank you. I'm not, like, rude or anything like that. And then sometimes they'll be like, oh, you fat bitch or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? Or are you a dyke or yeah, something? Here's the thing, though. They'll start with that. Jenny, I've had that happen, too. Jen doesn't have to worry about that anymore, though. She's in a bar owned by a friend of ours. Well, I know that, with but me, I'm just saying that... I was fucking twice that motherfucker's size, okay? And then there's fucking dozens of fucking friends all over the bar that fucking, you know what I mean, that fucking, that have come up with us over the past 10 years. Nobody's going to do anything to you. <laughs> okay. No, I know they're that not. That motherfucker might but say I'm just something saying... sideways. He's going to get stomped. Well, know, yeah, right? he's going to get it. He's going to get fucking stomped. All right, so... No, you were saying... If I'm drunk enough, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> if I see her going off, I'm going to fucking... Well, shit, I got yeah. into something... Uh, yeah. Not... Well, maybe it wasn't the last time we were at Mannequins, but the time before. Because one thing I hate, and this happens a lot at Mannequins, okay, is that you get, like, all, all the normies in there. Yeah. And, like, they're really very obnoxious with their dancing. Um yeah. In the sense that it's like, we're just going to take up the whole floor. We're going to knock into people. Ah, isn't that funny? Yeah. Like, look how fucking, you know, it's it's like they, they just want to, like, draw attention to themselves. And I will punch you if you fucking do this. <laughs> I will punch you. Especially if I'm really drunk. Then I'm just going to yeah. be like, pop! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't. Or either that or I'll be real slick and I'll just be yeah. like, whoops. And I'll, like, trip you and you'll fall on your face. Yes. I will I will absolutely do See, that. See, Sly is fucking talking over. He's Sly's right. <laughs> So Jenny, you're hot. You had to watch your back. Tom's job is to watch your back. Sly said he loves your glasses. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sly. You. Yeah, because I've had these for a while. Like Tom I bought months. those glasses for. Her. I said, yeah. Jenny, you need to get some of these new so big, big old fucking these big seventies glasses. Big seventies with the little cat eyes on the end that says that. that so all the little, all the goth girls are wearing these now. Fuck it, and it, it worked out, of course. Just I'm her hip connection. <laughs> oh, is that what you want? Her hip connects. Okay. Keeping up on on things. He's <laughs> keeping up with keeping the trends. Up on, keeping with, up with on the, the trends. With the youths. And with the youths. <laughs> Camp guys, it's poor form to just walk up and offer to buy a drink. It makes you look weak. I Yeah, I mean, I don't really... Like I said, I don't... I'm not going to... I, I generally don't want to turn down free alcohol. Now, if it's coming from somebody I know, then yeah. If you want to buy me a drink, okay, fine. But like I said, it's I have to know you, and I have to know that you don't like expect any shit out of that. You know what I'm saying? Seth, uh, Seth says, "I love when the guy simply cannot believe you wouldn't want him. So yeah, he yeah, must be yeah. a lesbian." They're out there. Yeah, I've uh, oh yeah. There's yeah. a lot of them are like that. Well, that's what I mean. Like, it, mannequins isn't too bad because you know we get a lot of normies in there who I don't know, but like we know yeah. a lot of people there, and we know everybody that works there. We it's know. Funny, we're saying normies, which is mu we the real word is mundanes. Fucking, that's yeah. what well, call you know, mundane. People call them normies, too. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 I don't mean that to be a racial slur, but get you all. <laughs> fucking mundanes, just regular people, okay? You just gotta watch it. You know, the average person fucking is okay. They can behave. Most perfect. people are yeah, okay. Right. But they got some people that just don't know how to fucking act. Yeah, and we and had we had that happen, yeah. like, last time we were there. Like some people, they just act. don't know how to behave. They don't have club etiquette. They uh, don't know how to fucking keep their eyes open to, and to understand and to be able to. Survey. They can't read the room. They can't read the room to survey the scene of who's with who. They don't understand it, okay? Because they're new and they don't have any connections to the scene. They assume no one else has any connections to that club. When it's nothing but couples in there and people that have, couples that have known other couples for decades and decades, you know, they don't get that. Yeah, I mean, some, of the, been people, that some of the people that go in there, I've known them for like right. 15 years. Right, and some of them try to hit on these fucking women who are fucking hot, right? But those women 
have husbands that are sitting right over there and their daughters are older than that dude and hotter <laughs> than that dude. Okay? But they don't see that they're dealing with a woman who's 40-something, late 40s. Yeah, she looks 24. She's not. She's 47. You know what I mean? Yes. There's a lot of that, you know? Yeah, we, we and, encounter that quite a bit. Right. Because a lot of people think of, well, 47, that's an old woman. No. 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 Fucking, we got friends that are fucking late 40s, early 50s. You look at them, you think they were in their, they're in their fucking yeah, you 30s. Would never know. You would never know. You'd never know. Well, I still think that people like associate maybe the goth look with somebody that's younger. Yeah. So when you see somebody that's not very obviously old, right. like dressed gothy, you just assume yeah. that's a younger person. Right. But a lot of times it's not. A lot yeah. of times they're much older than they of, appear to be. A lot of these dudes are assuming that Jen's like 30. You know, it's, uh, that's not the situation. Yeah. Dude's like 25. Yeah, I mean, it fucking doesn't understand that Jenny's 50. That I'm an old bitch. Yeah, you know. Although I feel old some days, I can right. tell you. And I'm talking to guys, and I asked them, so how do you think I am? You're 31. I says, no, dude. I'm fucking 54. <laughs> and so, oh, oh. You know, I'm older than your dad. And they're like, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. We're like their parents' age. Right, yeah. So it's a little weird. Yeah. I'm not offended. It's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know. What the hell? What's all this? Now? What's all this? One? Oh, that's, I don't know. Let's see. Dudes just go to Mexican VIP brothels where dreams come true. <laughs> yeah, that must, be, that must be. That must Tom's be. Tom's in Inglorious Bastards. That's yeah. That, that's got Tom be. Sykes says senior citizen discount. In a few <laughs> years, I'll be able to get that probably. Right. Yeah. When do you start getting uh, senior citizen discount? Know. 55? Sweet. Yeah. I'm going to take advantage of that. Five more years. I'm going to get cheap shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Tell everybody to get off my lawn. Start bringing coffee coupons to everywhere. Like counting shit out with pennies. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to lean into the old lady shit. I'm going to lean into it. <laughs> I'm going to show them the other gen. Okay, I got it. Well, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. So. All right, go ahead. You do that. I'll probably need another drink too in a minute. This is the other Jen. The other Jen. The other Jen. That's that. That's Dimitri's wife. Jen's about fifty, and a lot of these dudes don't know that that's a. You know, you'll have guys in there fucking. Come on. I'm trying to get that shit to fucking. Focus. Is it going to focus? Come on. What the fuck? Can't see the face. Shit's fucking ridiculous. But she's got kids in her fucking 20s. Come on. Come on. It won't focus. Can you guys see that? There you go. There you go. That's a woman that's that's a woman in her 50s. Okay. Here she comes. Couldn't get it to focus real well. Well, I'm gonna sat on your glasses. Yeah, I'm also pulling. Don't put them. Don't put them on. Yeah. Thank you, Sly. Oh my gosh, look at that little hippo on there. That's so oh wait, we getting a what Sly say? Nothing. It's nothing? just like, it's just like a little applauding hippo. Okay. <laughs> I love the applauding hippo. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, ah. they're saying too close. Pull back. <laughs> Uh, Tom Sykes says, I'm sure you can tell at the end of the day with all the makeup off their face that they were 50. Um, maybe. No. It depends. No. Well. You messed up my lighting again. Who's saying this? <laughs> Tom Sykes said that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't. Dude, no. 
there are some people that there we go. There are some people at fifty, to me, look like old people. I, I, mean, I look at them and go, man, you look fucking like in your sixties. There were other people in their fifties where I can't tell them from a person in their thirties. You know, in the light, no makeup, just can't tell them apart. You know, not everybody ages at the same rate. And uh, just health has a lot to do with it. <clears throat> I mean, we have friends that were in their 20s just 10 years ago, and you look at them now, and they, they look very different, and they fucking tell us that we're vampires. You guys don't age. Part of it's fucking... Tr part of it is natural, and part of it is not natural, because me and Jenny, are or we're enhanced slightly because of some of the, some of the drugs that we take. Let me go get um Tom's in Glorious Bastard, so where is yeah. the party, Tom? What's the plan for New Year's? We are either uh, we haven't decided. We're either, either gonna go to mannequins right. for the blackout fetish party. That's gonna be a shit show. Yeah. Um, maybe in a good way, we don't know. Right. Um, or we're gonna go to Memento Mori at Barbarella. Right. Which will be quieter. Or, like, less crowded, probably, because that's, like, not in the middle of everything. So that might be nicer. But I'm not, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't know what we should do. Because, like I said, we went to Mannequins on Halloween, and it was fun, but holy crap, it was so fucking crowded. And I imagine the crowd that usually goes there, like, outside of our crowd, um, that is total amateur hour. So any kind of major drinking holiday, you're going to have a bad time. And honestly, there's not a lot of parking in downtown Sanford because it's not huge. So Halloween, we almost came back home because we almost couldn't find a place to park. And we just like lucked into a fact we drove down a street and like somebody happened to be leaving. And so we took their spot, but we were just driving around and driving around. So I kind of feel like that's, it's going to be like exponentially worse, like on New Year's Eve. I mean, we would have to go down there super, super early <laughs> if we were going to go down there. But like I said, Barbarella might be better because that's in the warehouse district of Orlando and there's nothing else around there. You know what I mean? Like there's no other clubs, there's no other anything. It's just warehouses and they're all closed. So it's almost kind of like more, more like a private party or like one of those old raves that they used to do like out in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what kind of like vibe we're feeling and we'll see like who's going where. We're have to gonna like assess. We'll have to do like a poll <laughs> of like who's going where. So we have like the most people to hang out with, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sly says, People tell me I look like I'm in my forties because I didn't start didn't start drinking until I was sixty two years old. Yeah, um I honestly didn't start drinking until I didn't drink as a teenager, really, uh, I didn't drink in my 20s. I really didn't start drinking, I don't think, until I was in my 30s. So it's like I didn't really, like, fuck up a lot of shit when I was young. You know what I mean? Tom's and Glorious Bastard says, have you guys seen the new movie Elvis? Yes, we actually did a review of it probably a couple months ago. Probably a couple months ago. Um... Yeah, it's very good. Gotta say, Elvis was one sexy motherfucker. I get a man crush. Yeah, the guy that was in it was, like, really, really good. I can't remember what his name is right now. But, yeah, he was great. I'm gonna have to... Okay. Tom should dress as Baby New Year with a Bane mask. <laughs> if I had money, I would pay to see that. That would be, like, fucking hilarious. <laughs> Camp Guy says, we eat turnip greens and black eyed peas on New Year's Day. The greens for money and the peas for coins. Yep, that's my grandma always she used to do that every single year. But I didn't I didn't eat it. She always made it. <laughs> I was like, you you guys have fun with that. I'm not eating that shit. Maybe that's why like I never had bad luck or I always had bad luck like every year and I never had any money cuz I didn't eat the turnip greens. And honestly, like until recently, when I was growing up, I hated 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 black eyed peas. <sighs> hated them. Hated what? Black Eyed Peas. Oh, yeah. Because my grandma always made them. Because camp, camp Guy was saying, like, on New Year's, you'd always eat Black Eyed Peas and yeah, turnip greens. And I was like, yeah, my grandma made that every year. And ham and cornbread. Yep. She used to make that every single year. 
and I wouldn't eat it. Well, I'd eat the cornbread because cornbread's delicious, but didn't eat the turnip greens or black eyed peas. I said maybe that's why I've always been poor. That's yeah. that's the secret. <laughs> I didn't eat the good stuff on New Year's Eve. You actually got me into. Um, There's a lot of shit I got you. Black eyed peas and well, actually just green peas because. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, green, green peas, peas, green peas, yeah. Just regular peas. God, I fucking hated those. That was one of my worst. Like, even the sight or the smell of them, like when yeah. I was growing up, would just make me want to vomit. Yeah. And so for a long time, that was one of my worst like food aversions. I and got, I, I didn't have a lot of food aversions, but I that got, was my main one. I got a bunch of hams and uh, ham bones. I'm gonna make some fucking split pea soup in a bit. And Jenny used to hate fucking green peas. She's like, that was like her just main the, one. It's like, that oh, was no, my, I can't eat that. Just feel like the sight of them used yeah. to make me want to barf. So what I did was... I, I don't know why. I pureed them into split pea soup where there were no peas in there, just green. Yeah, but see, that used to gross me out as a kid too because yeah. there was baby food like that. Yeah. Um, and then I lived in Britain for a while. They have mushy peas. Mm-hmm. They'd always have like chips, fish and chips, and I always thought that yeah. was the grossest shit ever. I gave you that split pea soup, though. This is years back. And you're like, oh, this is good. Yeah. What was the difference? It took me the well. Spices. It to be honest, I didn't like say, but um, it took me a really uh, an act of God for me to like take the first spoonful of that because yeah. I was like really, really. But when you started eating them, what was it that did it? I'm not well because. It didn't taste the way I expected, I guess. Yeah. I don't I'm not really sure. I had to I've lost a lot of food aversions because I was yeah. actually like pretty picky as a little kid. Yeah. As a little kid, the only thing I couldn't eat was sauerkraut. And then eventually I got to where I could love that. I, I still love, don't like sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut. Like I'll eat it, but it's not really. Oh, There's very know. few things that I won't eat, but yeah. I mean there's some things that I'm just kind of like, "Yeah, I'd rather not." I'd rather not. My mom would start cooking up that sauerkraut, and that smell would get to me. It would fuck me up, and I'd start fucking running from it, crying. I was crying. I used to feel like that. I used to feel like that, like, like when my grandma would yeah, make just cabbage. Crying because I could smell like she'd boil cut. cabbage because it smells like farts. Really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's not lie. That's exactly what it smells like. I was like, "Why are you making this house smell out farty? Nobody wants to eat that. That's nature's way of telling you, please don't eat me." Running from the sauerkraut, and crying. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, What's the problem? It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but now I fucking love it. I the still don't like sauerkraut. sausage, sauerkraut, mustard, potatoes. You know, and there's some German shit there. I mean, you German... made a couple of times. You've made Crown like food. the whole, like the whole yeah. German. German. experience you make the whole german experience. like the german potato salad and yeah. like sauerkraut and all that and i've yeah. eaten that before but it's like i would rather just have the meat and the potatoes i'm not yeah. a big fan of sauerkraut yeah i'll eat most other things but that's old school german shit they probably, don't eat, they probably don't even eat that anymore they're well like i said every i eat mexican food well yeah like i kind of feel like the you know since the advent of the internet and foodie yeah. culture and all that other kind of right. stuff like everyone kind of knows about what everybody else is eating yeah. it's not like back in the old days where where there was regional everybody shit. ate that yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the Mex- <laughs> the germans are all eating mexican food now <laughs> i don't know like i wonder um you know any of you guys because i know some of you guys are um british or like maybe in other parts of europe I'm curious as to, like, what the extent is of, like, the Mexican food situation. Because I haven't been to the UK since 2009. And even in 2009, like, there was, in the bigger city, like, in London and stuff, there was some Mexican restaurants. But it still wasn't a massive thing. Because growing up in the United States, like, Mexican food is very much a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people, I, people don't even think of it as like a foreign cuisine. It's Mexican food. It's everywhere. A lot of it isn't foreign, because well, that's what I mean. Your basic American Mexican food is a is a version of Calmex, which is California Mexican food, or Tex-Mex, which is Texas Mexican food. Because we have Mexicans in California, Texas, everything through the fucking well, even before the even United before. States existed. Right, yeah. <laughs> Mexicans, Mexicans didn't move in here. They were here first. They were already here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the American Empire expanded into their territories. So America was... As America spread westward, 
it 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 merged with Mexican food. Now, it has been described by Calmex and Tex-Mex people that American tacos or Mexican t or California tacos were emergency tacos. They were tacos made out of emergency situations. They didn't have all of the. I the, love the idea of an emergency. It's an taco. emergency taco. <laughs> it, they didn't have all of the Mexican components that they needed, so they used American components. Whatever they had laying around, we're just yeah. gonna like throw it in the fucking taco, right? Because it's an emergency. But I got Mexican friends, you know, like Khan, Khan of Otslan. He's in the fucking comment section a lot. And fucking when we're off show, we're trading recipes and trading photographs of fucking Mexican girls' asses and shit like that. Yeah, that's what you they know, do. Yeah, and then you got to look at girls' asses. It's like it. taco ass. Taco, taco ass. ass. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that's I, my good, response that's has got to be like a number between <laughs> one and ten. I'm like, yeah, it's eight. Okay, okay, that's it. Because you know, Mexican got to understand, you know, fucking uh, an American man's opinion of a Mexican girl's ass. But this is normal. Growing up in Brazil, the same thing. Brazilian guys, me and Brazilian guys looking at girls' asses and booties and rating it and fucking going, yeah, it's part of biology, okay? Uh, it, it's, it, it's <laughs> Anyway, Mexican food is in Mexico. American food, or excuse me, Mexican-American food is the food that corporations picked up, like Taco Bell and all this shit, and they brought that shit worldwide. So if you go into Europe, chances are it's going to be an American version of Mexican, of Mexican food. food, which is not quite. It's not quite the, the same. same thing because there's a huge war between Mexicans and Mexican Americans about what Mexican food is. They're like, that is not fucking Mexican food. That's American food. Which, it, yeah. I kind of feel like we have Mexican the same American. situation with like right. Chinese food because yeah. you like American Chinese food and Chinese Chinese yeah, food are two completely different right. things. Right. <laughs> but I kind of feel like most people know that. Right. But I was just wondering because Ben says curry is the number one takeaway food in England and has been for years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, they're I mean, honestly, they love Indian food, right, in England. But that yeah. makes sense because they like like Indian immigration, where. I kind of feel like when I was over there, and like I said, it's been a long time. It's been more than 10 years since I've been over there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I felt like I saw a couple of Mexican places in London, mm -hmm. but I felt like it wasn't as, I mean, in the United States, like Mexican food is like ubiquitous. Yeah. It's everywhere. Even though there may be more than one style of it. There right. is. Yeah. Well, that's just like any cuisine. Right. Look, if you're in an, a foreign country, and you want to know about Mexican food, I'm going to tell you, look at Mexican recipes. On YouTube, there's a channel called Cooking Con Claudia. C-O-N, con, with, Claudia. She can teach you how to cook Mexican food, and it's in English. I use a lot of her recipes. and They, they were recommended to me by Khan of Aslan, down in Tijuana. And uh, she's a cute Mexican girl and speaking English and she'll tell you how to make everything that they make. We'll say it too, is fucking better. If you ask Mexican me Mexican food is like really really good too. Like better. not only like good tasting but it's also yeah. really good for like um if you don't have a lot of money. Yeah. Like if you yeah, really want something delicious yeah. that is very very cheap to make. Yeah, then you, Mexican food is yeah. well Indian food is kind of good Indian for that too. too. But like Mexican food is really good right. for that. It's going to be a little bit more labor intensive. Okay, you're not really making Mexican food until you learn how to make a tortilla. To make a tortilla, you're going to need some kind. Of, you're going to need fucking tortilla corn flour, which is maseca. Okay, you mix that with water, and you're going to make a fucking corn tortilla, and you're going to cook that and make tortillas. And the difference between a, a purchased tortilla and a, a homemade tortilla is it's night and day. Yeah, they're You're really 90. two different universes. You want to fuck. I mean, the store bought ones are they're okay. fine. They're, okay. they're fine, but like homemade they're, ones are much. The better. homemade ones are where it's at. And you you got to learn how to make carnitas, little meat, meat, meaties, little meats, little meaties, little little meat, <laughs> and it's made out of like pork butt or pork shoulder, and it's got to be spiced the right way, lemon juice or orange juice, and a bunch of fucking spices like cumin seeds and garlic and salt and 
uh, oregano and you're gonna slow cook that or cook it in a pressure cooker to make carnitas and then you're gonna and they have to be cooked several times because you pre-cook it and then you're pulling off of that and then you're putting that on a fucking black skillet and cooking it again while you're making a taco and you're assembling it so you have to learn how to make guacamole or, or avocado sauce uh, if you can't make if you can't get your hands on waka or, 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 or avocado, then you learn how to you gotta learn how to make a fucking um, salsa salsa casera or house salsa, you know salsa fresca fre fresh salsa. And then there's different kinds of cheeses that you can use. Mozzarella cheese is like the basic, but you really want I got it here at this middle Mexican shop. You want the damn white cheese. What was that stuff called? Fucking um, queso queso. Fucking, um, oh shit. I can't remember. It's like string cheese. Well, we're lucky because we kind of live we out Mexi right, in yeah. the in the rural middle of nowhere, yeah. but not that far from here is right. like a really big like Mexican restaurant slash grocery store. Yeah, and anything you need for Mexican food, they right. got it in there. It's called queso or cheese oaxaca. That's what you want. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. It's yeah, Victor just said it. Oaxaca. It's a fucking. White cheese is kind of like string cheese, kind of like, it's also kind of like mozzarella. Man, that shit's good. Uh, it's very expensive here in Florida. Dollar for dollar, I'd probably take mozzarella. We can get that a lot cheaper. But, but there is a difference in flavor. There I is noticed. a difference. I mean, mozzarella yeah. will work yeah. in a pinch. Yeah. But, but uh, go check out Claudia, Cooking con Claudia. She can teach you everything about Mexican food. Okay. Um, dollar for dollar Mexican food fucking just puts a good meal on the plate it just does it's uh, home cooking and it's southerners understand it real well it's very similar to southern food in its philosophy where you take something and you don't waste anything and you just try to you just making more and more meals out of out of things it's like that it's a very good cuisine the only thing that comes close to it dollar for dollar would be Indian food. I was just going to say. Indian I food. think Mexican food and Indian food yeah. are is my favorite right. cuisines for yeah. making like something that's like fucking right. super delicious Bang out of for the buck. out of yeah. ingredients that cost right. like a dollar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They really know how to like maximize. Yeah. Like right. those two cuisines like specifically yeah. like are really really good at that. Yeah. Ben says 90% of ethnic fast food places here, Chinese, Indian, Malaysian, Japanese, Mexican, Thai, whatever, are run by Vietnamese operators. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Where is that at? In, I don't know if you know, but like in Orlando, we have a little section called Little Vietnam, and it's like a little section of blocks that's all like just a whole bunch of Vietnamese restaurants. And some of them are good. I used to work down there, so I, I ate at them sometimes, but... Um, let me see. They're talking about, oh, the Moscow Slayer. Yeah, we'll have to, like, um, Moscow what? look into that. That's that killer that they just caught. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll look into it. Yeah, because I don't know all that much about it. I haven't really been following it because, you know. <laughs> They're asking me my hypothesis. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I have, to, I have to, like, look it up. I get so wrapped up in all the stuff that we're doing like for the show like what movie are we doing today or what topic are we doing today that it's like I don't have a lot of time to like look into other stuff you know what I mean so I try to keep up with shit but it's hard <laughs> yeah right yeah okay we've only been on for two hours yeah we're not going anywhere I'm good okay you want to talk about food some more we can talk about anything you want to talk about. <laughs> Which you, yeah, you uh, forgot, a, you, you uh, hit a dead end there. Well, let's see what's good. Everybody's going. Let's see what we're doing. They tell me. Well, where are you? Did you have any food to make later or no? Victor says grits. He just says grits. <laughs> he made, he what, made grits. Made was grits. it yesterday or the day before yesterday? The day before yesterday. It was the day before yesterday. Yeah. Well, we had some ham left over from Christmas. Yeah. So he made some grits. Grits with cheese. Put and some ham. cut up ham in yeah. there, and put some uh, hard boiled eggs in there. Yeah, that and I and delicious. Uh, green like and for green, green for and red, brunch, green and red, but green yeah, and red peppers bell peppers too. out of the garden. Yeah, put those in there. 
That was good. Yeah. That was good. We hadn't had grits in a long time, actually. <sighs> yeah, it had been a while. It had been a while. It had been a while. Making me think about all the kind of stuff I can make. Today, you made, yeah. for lunch, you made, um, you had uh, gumbo. No, it was or jump or uh, it was no, it was it or was jambalaya ish. No, it was it was Cajun thirteen bean soup. Okay, all over rice. So similar to gumbo. similar. It similar. had like the sausage. And yeah, stuff it, in yeah, it. it had sausage in there, but it was uh, no, it was Cajun thirteen. He, bean you soup. made that yesterday though, yeah. because we just we had a little yeah. bit for dinner last night, and it was like hot. Yeah. Holy crap! I think even you thought that it was like yeah, too yeah, hot. Yeah, I thought it was hot. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I was just being a weenie. No, the thirteen bean package came with a with with a with a, with a spice package in it, and it just said add spices to the fucking. Okay. So like, okay. <laughs> Had I known, I probably would have only put about half of those in there. I Maybe ate it, but I was just kind of I like had to um, while I was eating it, I would eat a bite and then I like I would put a piece of ice in my mouth yeah. like that, you know, then put a piece of ice in my mouth. Yeah. It was it was really really hot. Yeah. It was good though. It was less hot today. It might. It got a little more. Mild. It mellowed out. It mellowed out. It, yeah. mellowed out. it was very hot though. Right. <laughs> I'm hungry though. What about you? What are you gonna make? I don't know. You don't know yet. No. Shut it down. Cut me loose, and I'll make us something to eat. All right. Okay. Yeah. You. Yeah. You want something to eat? Yeah. I guess. We'll make something to eat. Let's see what I got. You never did. Okay. You never did tell me like much of what you did at the at the at the Oasis. Thing. Oh, at the Oasis, there wasn't much. Other than other than the old lady that you were showing like your Rick Springfield pictures to. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. The old lady's me showing uh, Rick Springfield pictures and look at Jenny <laughs> coming up with this bullshit. No, that I was, just, that I was just, about I, it. That was about it. There wasn't much going on. It uh, wasn't that good of a day. Yeah, nah. not a lot of people out. Nah, not really. Dead. Okay, so I didn't miss anything. Mm. I mean, you know, it's not really my scene anyway. But I'm just no, <laughs> I was mostly just fucking waiting for dudes to show up with their bikes. You know what I mean? And wasn't really much going on. Hmm. Yeah. I kind of feel like will be this week. Sunday. I get like the week between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Is always kind of like so fucking weird. Yeah. I just always feel like everybody's just like mit- like nobody wants to do anything. Everybody spent their money. That's what I mean. It's yeah. just kind of like, and when I, you know, when I was working like regular job or even now and stuff yeah. like that, it's like everybody's just kind of like, fuck this. I don't right. feel like doing anything. Like everybody's worn out from the holidays. Everybody's broke from the holidays. Right. And it's just kind of like, oh, there's another holiday coming up. And I was like, I don't want to deal with anything until yeah. like the new year starts. So it's just kind of like this weird, like purgatorial, like week where everyone's just kind of like in stasis or like some yeah. in holding pattern you know what I mean yeah. it always like strikes me as that and I kind of feel like that too to be honest yeah. with you Tom Sykes says uh, shut it the fuck down Jenny shut it the fuck down Jenny. okay shut he's, down. he's gonna go like get some beat alright so hopefully you guys have a good safe New Year's Eve we're gonna go out New Year's Eve probably but we'll see how it goes and we will probably be back talking about a movie on Sunday, right? Yeah. And we'll see if I have time. We might have like a new logo and a new intro and all that other kind okay. of stuff. We'll see. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and work on that like tomorrow. Okay. And we'll see if I, I got ideas. Like I've been coming up with stuff today. So we'll see. Like I'm going to do it a little bit at a time, but we'll see how it goes. So it'll be neat. It'll be like 2023. We're going to like, because I haven't changed stuff up in a, in a little while. So we'll see. Uh, so thank you for hanging out with us this evening on the last live stream of 2022 and whoops sorry something like popped up in my face all right so (laughs) we'll see you guys again on sunday afternoon have a good weekend you guys good night